my ducks, my swans, welcome to the pond. My name is Dorian from group82music.com. I'd like to welcome y'all. Everybody's coming in here live. Appreciate y'all. Let me test my levels. I'm out here talking. Need to make sure it's still good. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear me. When I'm down here, it's a little better. But up here, yeah. So I'm going to stay probably right there. But yeah, man. Appreciate all y'all that's coming through. Everybody, write your comments so I can see. Put in the comments. We put you right up here on the screen, man. But I'm going to talk to y'all tonight. Oh, and donate. Donate via Super Chat, Super Sticker on YouTube, uh, anywhere else. You know, donate via Cash App, Dollar Sign Group 82 LLC. Go ahead and do that. So write y'all comments, man, so I can see who up in here, you know. But, like, this is why your music doesn't sell. You know, I've been on this thing lately about telling people that they need to quit the music business. And that's crazy because anybody that knows me knows I'm somebody that really, really wants people's dreams to come true. You know, and so I'm not a dream killer at all. It's not who I am. You know, I had things happen to me when I was younger that could have prevented me. Well, that did prevent me from going after one of my dreams, but I was able to fight that energy. And now I'm going after what I want to do now. So I know the power of that shit, like when you have a dream killer around. So I, I really don't give that energy off. I'm telling people they need to quit the music business and quit the music industry and quit trying to do this is because they don't have the energy or the ambition or the natural curiosity that it takes to make it in this or to have any sort of success, you know, that's going to yield you money. You know, the fact that some of y'all still haven't made a dollar from your music ever, like deposit into your account, not you sold somebody a CD they gave you, I mean, into your account from your royalties, at this point is embarrassing, you know? And so like there's everybody who's a musician is trying to get to a certain point. Right. And we're all on the same highway. There's like one musician highway and we're all trying to get to that point of what we define as success. Some of us is 10 miles up the road. Some of us is a hundred miles up the road. Some of us is a thousand miles up the road, you know, but it's just one highway. And for all of y'all who are supposedly rappers or singers, y'all on the same highway with us, but y'all not even moving. Y'all just getting in the way, causing unnecessary traffic jams while we're weaving in and out of traffic, trying to get to the point that we call success. And y'all messing it up for everybody else because you have no ambition. If you were moving slowly, no one would say anything, but y'all are literally parked on this highway and been there for like 10 years. Get your raggedy ass car off the highway. You're not trying to move. You're not trying to make money in this. Those are y'all that need to quit. Those are y'all that need to quit. You need to get out. Because your music's never going to sell. Because it's notice I've said nothing about talent. I said nothing about songwriting ability or beats or any of that. I, I said nothing about that. I, Ron, appreciate the dollar, bro. I, I said nothing about that. I'm talking about your will to win. You got to have it at a certain level to make money in this. And it doesn't just magically appear as you get older or nothing like that. Either you got the shit or you don't. And if you can't make a dollar off your music right now, or you haven't got a dollar deposit into your account this month from your music, you, you need to stop. You need to stop. You need to get out the way. You know, and... The sooner you do that, the sooner you'll go find something where you do have the work ethic, the ambition, and the natural, genuine curiosity to do. I firmly believe that if you want whatever you want to do in this country, you can do. Now, there's going to be a point where talent's going to have to come in. But if you have above average talent in anything, above average, I feel like there's, any, there's nothing in this country that you can't do that you have above average talent for. Jelani Harris, appreciate the 999 super sticker. Thank you, brother. Like Donald Trump, like he had above average talent of connecting and entertaining people when he was on the screen. So brand building, he had above average talent for brand building and he finessed that to become the president of the United States. That's the type of country that we live in, you know, so you need to find whatever it is you have above average talent in with combined with the natural curiosity that you want to do it and your life's going to change and your family's life's going to change. And some of y'all think it's music and it's not. It's, it's not music for you because you don't have 
the natural curiosity to make it happen. I don't know if you have the above average talent or not. I, Ron, appreciate the $5. Appreciate that, bro. Skills, boss, you can always work for skills. You can always get better. Like, you know, so that's why I said I'm not – you can always get better. It's never about y'all music. It's never about y'all music. It's about y'all lack of curiosity and work ethic and the ability to execute and apply consistently. That's the reason y'all don't make no money. This shit is not that hard. I didn't think it was that hard when I started, and I was 100% right about it. The formula to make money from music is probably the easiest out. Man, the, you know, I'm going to talk about it in the future. I'm not there yet, but I will. When I tell y'all the behind the scenes of how Group 82 got started, y'all going to be like, what the fuck? Like, the fact that we got 39 people in here, you know, which I appreciate because random on the spot. I used to have like two people in. So we got 40 people in here. The fact that it's not going to be 40 million one day is going to just blow y'all mind. Because the, the shit that I did, it's, it's fucking crazy. It's just, it's fucking crazy. It's crazy. Kwame, what's up, man? You know, and so I'm saying all that to say that. If you aren't somebody who's really getting after it, Marquise Allen, appreciate the $5 via cash app. Thank you, brother. If you're not somebody that's really getting after it, you're not going to win. Because those of us that have above average talent in something and we have the natural curiosity and work ethic, you'll never beat us, ever. And even if you do have more talent, quote, unquote, because you don't harpen, you don't sharpen, sorry, you don't harness your talent. I said harpen. You don't harness your talent. You, you're going to get some wins against us, but out of 100, we're going to win 80% of the time. Because this shit's not about talent, man. It's about consistency, work ethic, curiosity, execution, R risk management, time management. Perseverance. All these intangibles. That's what this is about. People who do it just to do or just because it's cool is ruining for everyone. Seriously, you know, and I wish there was ways we could separate, you know, and, and it kind of is like if somebody posts all their songs on SoundCloud, don't even worry about them. You know what I'm saying? But like you niggas that post on Spotify and the shit's not even mixed. It's not even mastered. You know, the files corrupted. You don't even have a real cover art. weird it's really weird we're having a showcase tomorrow here on youtube so make sure you sign up for that it's 50 dollars to get your song played we're gonna give you feedback you know i'm a little i got a little bit more patience now so i'm gonna uh i'm gonna give y'all some i always give good feedback but you know i'm gonna listen to the records you know but you you get 90 seconds if you don't capture our attention in 90 seconds it's not a good song so you niggas out here selling, um, I mean, making five, six minute songs and saying that's your single. Like you're not, you know, once again, it's niggas like you didn't need to get out the way. Like how, how can you say a five minute song is your single in 2021? How the fuck can you say that? That's the, the ignorance around that shows you don't study the game at all. We're supposed to be having five, six-minute songs. The intro will be 90 seconds. The fuck? Come on, man. Nobody's listening to that shit. Man, you got albums out here. E you got EPs out here, nigga, that's eight minutes. You think I'm going to listen to your six-minute song? Man, fuck you. You doing that? That's being nice. People click off song the first 15 say, Yeah, they do. They do. You know, but... Atomized beats, we're still trying to teach, you know. So there's a lot of people who don't know that they got to get straight to the point on the intro. Or if you do do an intro, you got four bars at the most, and that's it. Sometimes it's probably two bars, what you need to do with the intro if you're going to do that instrumental shit. You know, but like, you know, you're right. The first 15 seconds, you shit for me, nigga, it's like, Based on what I'm doing and where my thumb is, you might have four seconds, if that. 
That shit better come on. It better not. I need to feel the low end quick. Quick. That's what it is for me. I need to feel the low end. I need to know the bottom of the record. Once I know what the bottom of the record feels like, then I'm like, okay, I, I'll decide if I want to stay there or not. You know, if I got to wait forever and I don't know who you are and I'm waiting for the low end, I'm, I get irritated. So I cut the shit off. And for producers who are watching this, you need to take notice of that too. Damn, LeBron. Jesus. 84, babies. Um, for producer watchers, you need to understand that too. G Rich 05 said, Should you open with the hook? I think so. You know, unless it's something that like you need to open with something that's going to be repeated throughout the song. It ain't gotta be the hook. It can be a bridge, it can be a ad lib, it can be a saying, it can be a whatever pre pre hook i just believe you need to whatever you start the song off with that needs to be repeated throughout you know you're making music you're not making a fucking speech you're making music and in music it has its own bounce it has its own syncopation you know i don't make music the way that i'm talking right now with the rhythm and the bpm of what i'm talking right now you know when i make music it's different and I, oh, and I do the bounce and the syncopation like, like I want, you know. So you got to realize that, man. You making music, y'all niggas just be wanting to hear y'all self talk fast on records. Underscore JB twenty two. What's up, man? I'm new to your page and watching for three months now, and I'm really loving your content. Learning a lot from you. Thank you for your knowledge, man. Respect, no doubt. JB, man, appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. Coming to the pond three months ago and sticking around, that shit means a lot to me, man. You know, because this social media shit is hard. You know, it's it's a lot of competition, and you gotta be consistent, or motherfucker will forget about you. So when y'all stick around and shit, y'all check for the content, y'all come to the lives. You know, you be on the IG, you participate in polls and shit. That shit means a lot, and it makes me do shit like what I'm doing right now. Like I'm I'm filming my class. It's a it's a music marketing class. You know, and so, like, we're – curriculum's done. You know, we're about to start production. Um, the infrastructure's there. You know, the themes there. Everything's there. And once these videos get done, we're going to put it all together, and then we're going to offer it to y'all. And this class, for me, is literally everything that I learned on the back end to get millions of streams on on Spotify – to go number one on iTunes and to be able to do my music full time. You know, this this class is literally everything that I have to give y'all where you can replicate what I've done. Like I'm all types of links are in that motherfucking everything. You know, like it's exactly what I wanted. I put I put six years of knowledge into this course. Six years. So you gonna get six years of knowledge in six weeks. It's gonna expedite your career drastically. And it's a premium. It's a premium class. It's not for everybody, right? I've been trying to purge the pawn of the people that ain't real, because I knew that this day was coming, you know. And so this is not for everyone. It's not. That's why our price is going to be two thousand dollars. But I'm telling you this right now. If somebody would have sold me that two two thousand dollar class when I first started, for all the stuff that I've been through, man, I swear on everything, I would have paid for that. No question. Man, it's it's no question. <laughs> I'm serious, man. That this this two thousand for this class is going to make you so much more money faster and save you so much more money on shit you would have wasted. You know what I mean? Like shit's crazy. Shit's crazy, nigga. You know, and there's people out there that have their classes. That's cool. You know, I'm speaking from an independent artist perspective who's done everything on his own. I mean, fucking everything. I've done more shit on my own than y'all even know. The only thing that I have not, like, done on my own completely is make the music. I write. I might make the beat. I might not. I write all my own shit. I don't have no other ghost, I don't have no ghost writer, no shit like that. 
Only time I didn't write is like if something's in Spanish, my homeboy G. Martin, he wrote the hook on Sex God, um, you know, and cut some of the runs and shit. But everything else, every, I'm writing all my everything I say, I write. But I don't I didn't know how to mix. So I want an engineer, but my hands in my hand is in on everything else. You know, and there's nobody else in the music business because I've studied this. There's nobody else in the music business, the independent artist music business that's done what I've done at the level that I've done it at the speed that I've done it and is sharing the information. Nobody, no one, nobody. Thank you, man. I'm planning on staying consistent. I'm new to all this, and you've been a big part in taking in the knowledge and research. So I just want to show you love, get that respect. Appreciate that, bro. This is why you suck at English, Cell. I mean, you feel better? You want to suck my dick now? Weirdo. How are you in here hating on somebody selling knowledge? I don't know. He's whatever. I'm just here to support. But bottom line, I'm motivated. But when I listen there, I become more motivated. Keep going. Man, my brother Harvey, man, went to high school with him. I um, I shouted you out in a uh, video today. I got a video. It's a it's a clip from when your brother was on uh on Expeditiously. You know, he was talking about like starting the cannabis business. So I got a clip coming on that. So I shouted y'all out in that. But man, y'all go follow Harvey, man. He got a good podcast. You know, Dream Chaser Basketball Indy. He's a trainer out there too. He's a dude that played Division One basketball, been in the basketball family, really close in the NBA. So to the NBA, his brother was in there for a while. So y'all go follow Harvey, man. Support all his stuff. True support slaps, man. I've been playing on Spotify, so you got support coming out of Texas. Keep bringing that heat. No doubt, man. What's what's your favorite song on that joint? Russ has. What are your thoughts on auto-tune? I've been trying to find a singer, but I'm at the point where I'm ready to do it myself. Do it yourself. You know, the great thing about auto-tune is it has really, really lowered the level of, of singing quality that you need to be for people to like your record. J. Cole can't sing a lick. And this man sings in a lot of his shit. <laughs> but, he, you know, you that rapper singing thing, you can just do it. It's That's actually like, I feel like as a rapper now, you got to do that. I feel like you, people want to know what your rapper singer voice sounds like. You know what I mean? I was talking to the haters in your comments, hating on your, on your course. I mean, whatever. <laughs> shit. Appreciate you, though, Mackin. What's up, Bloom? How you been, brother? Well, it's quite difficult for a rapper to rap in Spanish from the only Spanish-speaking country in Africa. It ain't quite difficult. You, If you're a rapper that raps in Spanish, why the hell are you on my English-speaking YouTube channel right now at 10 o'clock at night my time? Now, I know you're a fan of my content, but if you're really focused on getting people to supports your music and make money from it you got to start in the place where they're going to understand every fucking thing that you're saying right i'm not going to understand everything that you're saying people in here ain't going to understand everything you're saying so where are you going because spanish is not some you know regional dialect that's super small it's a pretty big fucking language there's a lot of people that speak that shit and they exist on the internet too you need to find where they are and give them what they want Scroll is the best song, true support. Appreciate that, man. Oops, my fault. I need real tips on how to chart on Billboard. I ain't chart on Billboard, so I can't tell you. Now, should I have? Yeah. Yes, motherfucker, the shit was there. We saw the numbers, but, you know, they didn't put me on there, so fuck Billboard. I don't know. Now, I can tell you how to go number one on iTunes, you know. I need real tips on how to you type the same thing. Great to see you back, boss. How you feeling? Yeah, we're doing a live showcase tomorrow, man. Absolutely. Appreciate it, though. Hey, man, love your stuff. I find yourself on YouTube and watch you for a while. Love from Wisconsin. Young Hefe, what up, Wisconsin? Where you from, Milwaukee? Or Racine, where you from, bro? Midwest, nigga, love Midwest. Bro, you need a lot of streams to hit Billboard. Don't that shit has to pass like viral 50 on Spotify. Billboard's rigged, man. Billboard is a magazine. It's billboard is not a it's not a objective chart. It's a magazine. It's a chart inside of a magazine. You know how you have like 
you know, the the rankings for college basketball, right? You got ESPN poll. I don't know if USA Today still has a poll, but they got these polls, right? How they determine the best teams. Like, that's like if I started my own magazine, my own sports magazine, and then I have my rankings in there. And people start taking my rankings more more serious. How are, how are my rankings more serious than the ones that are already out, right? And that's what Billboard is. It's, it's just a chart inside of a magazine. They don't they don't have a true objective formula. Go look up the formula. It's fucking bullshit. The they still they still incentivize radio plays over pure album sales. They give you more points to chart on Billboard. If you have radio spins, then pure album sales. That doesn't even make any fucking sense. That shows you it's rigged right there because the radio can only play so many songs in an hour, right? They only have so many slots. And who are they giving those slots to? Signed artists. Why? Because labels spend millions of dollars on radio promo. So that section of the Billboard formula already is rigged against independent artists, then you don't penalize album sales. You, you make that the lowest criterion. And then the number one now is, is streams. You know an independent artist is not going to outstream a signed artist. Because the signed artists are with Universal, Warner, and Sony, and they own or have equity stake are very financially, mutually beneficial relationships with these streaming companies. So they're going to give them looks for their artists. They're not, they're not doing that with an independent artist. So that whole billboard shit's rigged. It's all, every section's rigged. And then you can hit all those metrics and they'll say some dumb rule like, well, you package too many t-shirts with your album sale. Because motherfuckers get incentive bonuses at these record labels when you hit chart positions. So it's just their homeboys rigging the shit for them. Shit's whack. No, and I keep saying I'm going to do a video on it. I will. I mean, and, and the same people who are in charge of the charts are in charge of the radio spins, too. And these motherfuckers own the radio stations. It, like, the shit's all fucked up. I was confused on why you said mustard. Messed up by license, sending out his music five years in advance. How'd he mess up? He getting it back later. He ain't say he getting it back later. He said he sold that shit. He didn't say that. Nowhere in that video did he say, well, at least the clip that I posted, that he was getting it back later. He said he bought his old shit. And he said going forward, he gets all his other shit. But he said he sold all that. He got an advance on it and sold it so he could take care of himself financially. That's why I said he was betting on his future. You didn't understand what he said. That motherfucker just gave up like a trillion dollars. And I'm not bullshit. Those songs that he produced in that era, they're going to be known with that era forever. Like period, any period piece music, any period piece, I'm sorry, in, in entertainment going forward between the years of 2009 and 2018 about black culture is going to have to in, include a DJ Mustard song. It's going to have to. He has a whole decade where his music was the soundtrack. He just sold all that shit. Terrible. Like he, not him. He shouldn't have done that. And I'm not saying that he ain't going to make more money going forward. He might because he's fucking talented. But for what he did, that was his run. That was his Quincy Jones 80s. That was his Dr. Dre late 80s, mid-90s. You know what I'm saying? That was Timberland's mid-90s to mid-2000s. That was Kanye's. 04 to fucking 2013. That was his run. And he just sold that shit. Hell no. Nah. Fuck that. Fuck that. Curtis King says, stop sitting on your music, just put it out. No release schedule. Yeah, he's right. That's not, and that's actually not what he said. What he said was, stop sitting on music like you ain't gonna die. Basically. That shit was dope. That was a dope-ass tweet he put out. Their whole plan is just to get everyone to sign on these companies and just take that advance check. That looks good on everything. A 
When you ever sign to a label, even if it's a part, I'm never signing a no label. The amount of money they would have to give me, the amount of ownership they would have to give me, you know, they would have to be um, a really forward thinking, innovative, cutting edge label. Or they would have to be some of the dumbest motherfuckers in the history of business. Because the way that the way the contracts and the entire financial ecosystem of record labels is set up, it makes absolutely no logical sense to give an artist like me what I would want. It's, it, it makes no sense financially. Like, it's stupid as fuck. So don't even, we don't even, we don't need no one's music that bad. Nobody. <laughs> Especially somebody that doesn't have like a massive, like Drake level brand, you know? Like, they don't even, they don't even sweat Chance the Rapper. And they were elevating Chance. They were working, quote unquote, partnership with Chance, however you want to say it. And, and look what happened. The, the next album, they was like, nah, nah we're not going to give you what we gave you before. We'll give you a little bit, but we're not going to give you what we gave you before. And look what happened. You know, they, they, be, they be sunning niggas. And the same thing happened to Macklemore. They gave Macklemore the house. I know he paid for Warner's radio promotion arm, but he got a lot more than that. I mean, he, they got Macklemore got the house for what he put up. How that second album and all that shit do? I think he dropped the album like last year. I mean, like the the apex and the fall off is fucking insane. And that's designed intentionally. It's like when you go on a roller coaster, like which roller coasters give you more of a jump on the first drop? The higher you are up, right? Like I'm from Indianapolis and in Ohio. We used to go to Kings Island every summer. When you rode like that Smurf roller coaster when I was younger, that first drop wasn't that much. So it's like, woo. Right. But the first time you got that motherfucking vortex, your first big kid coaster, that shit all the way up here. You're like, oh, shit, when you drop. And that's what the record label wants you to do. Record industry wants you to do. Oh, shit. When you drop. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm dropping. What I got to do? What I got to do to not drop no more? What I got to do? What I got to sign? What, what I got to do? And that's how they get everybody. Because niggas is, oh, shit. They don't know how to control themselves. They don't have no brake pads. They don't have no parachute because they didn't help themselves get up. When you build your own way up, you control your own way down. Music don't sell. Bullshit. Shit sells. Easier than it was before. Chance wasn't trying to share that money for them three hats. Label pull a support. That might be it too. Never know. How do you feel about the state of rap music? All rap songs are popular. Only talk about things to keep black people down. Rarely any positive hits. It's not true, Tammy. It's not true. You know, the, the stuff that the white owned company spoon feeds you. Yes. It's the most destructive songs about black people, harming people, harming each other. Duh. Like, why would they not push that? This is white people. Remember, we were talking about rich white men. They have every incentive to keep us killing each other. So the companies they own, yeah, they're going to push you that shit. But you got more choices than ever before. If you take responsibility for what you want to listen to, you can listen to all positive, uplifting rap for like 38 hours straight. There's playlists on YouTube right now. Playlists on Spotify right now. Like it's up to you. There's so many rap is so diverse now. You can find whatever rap you want. We got racist rap. Like, think about what I just said. We got racist rap, white supremacy rap. That's how diverse the shit is now. So stop depending on these record companies, these mainstream media, these TVs, these films, these politicians to be of high moral code. They're not. And we know that. So stop being surprised when they do low moral code shit. Y'all want to donate, man. Cash app, dollar sign, group A2 LLC. You on YouTube, hit super sticker, hit super chat. Do that. $5, $10, $20. Appreciate that. Bro, do you think you need to know the game as much as you do to make it in here? Hell yeah, you do. Hell yeah, you do, nigga. And you ain't got to know me. Like, I'm, I'm kind of a nerd with shit. Especially with business shit and money shit. Like I'm, I'm just a nerd with it. You know what I mean? So you ain't got to be like that. But, man, you really need to know what the fuck's going on. 
but but I give you so much knowledge in all these videos. Like if you just really watch all the videos, you know, you're going to basically get everything that you need to know to not get fucked over in this industry. And I ain't no lawyer or nothing like that, obviously. But, you know, just if, with all the videos I have, watch them. Just watch them. Even if you don't want to hear what the front part is, just skip to me talking. Nigga, not, I've given a lot of shit. How can African artists grow and go global? Doing shit like you're doing now. It's YouTube. Motherfucker, I'm in America. I'm in Texas watching you. No one cares what country you're from. Is the shit dope? Do you have any thoughts on stream bots? Yeah, don't do them. Shit's stupid. Not just white folks. Some look like us pushing for the BS too. The bad. Yeah, I mean, that's true too. You know, but I'm saying like we can't be worried about that. You no. Know? Like we keep saying, oh my God. Why does the government keep fucking us over? Because the government doesn't care about us. You should know this by now. Like, this isn't a new thing. Like, we're like, what? How, how many years is, is a generation? 70? Let's say it's 75 years is a generation. So, no, it can't be 75. A generation? Nigga, let's say it's 30. So, you go back 300 years, that's 10 generations. So 400 years, was that 13, 14 generations? So we're, it's safe to say, we're like 15th generation African-American. And y'all still, y'all think our, gen, our ancestors 15 times back trusted or liked the government? No, they didn't. So we don't either. So stop like depending on that shit. You have a musical family history? Nah, not like that. I mean, I heard some like distant relatives did shit, but I don't, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's up to us and I listen to it. Maybe that will change. Don't sell. Do you have any idea why music don't sell no more? Music does sell. <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all, y'all gotta, you gotta develop a brand. What's your thoughts on World Star Hip Hop to post your music video market promotion? I believe the price is currently 5K. What do you think, man? Who the fuck look, goes to World Star? When people want to see a music video, where, where do people go to watch it? You're on it. You're on YouTube. No one says, hey, I want to watch a music video. The first place they go is World Star. They go to fucking YouTube, man. Why the fuck would you pay 5000 The fact that they're still getting 5000 for them fake-ass views, I mean, that is fucking... Like, I mean, I had a great business plan to start with Group A2 Music. We did well. Their shit, like, what they've done? Oh, my God. That shit. <sighs> 70, 20 years of generation. How do you feel about hip-hop artists? We've been this fan base from scratch as mid-30s who can rap just haven't put the music out for some years. That's up to you, man. You know, like, no one cares how old you are. They don't. It matters if that music slaps or not. So no one cares about your history till you tell them. And you make them care. No one cares how old you are. And you ain't put out no music in some years. So what? If you got the gift, that shit don't leave. It's age of factor. Nah, everybody listen to rap. My daughter, she's under two. Nigga, she listens to rap. There's rap songs like beats that she likes. She's a fan of it. And now we got 80-year-old grandmas who were legit fans of rap because when rap came out, it, she was in her 40s. You know, she was a liberal. She, you know, had a few black boyfriends when it wasn't cool to really have that. But she married white, you know what I mean? And, you know, but she was always into black culture, always had the appreciation of it. She wasn't a vulture. Now she's 80. You know, and she listens to Run DMC still. So, no, age is not a factor. <laughs> Grind don't stop. Sure don't. Hey, bro, you're super inspirational. Check out my podcast video. Um, the owner Q died. They just keep moving, didn't bat an eye. You know, hey, use 5K, promote your video on YouTube. Um, You know, this shit crazy, man. Motherfuckers just. I'm not going to go down that tangent tonight about just how black people support the most fucked up art 
no, not even art. I shouldn't say that because it's not art. It's the most fucked up, like, you know, we tolerate so much abuse. <laughs> like, just voluntarily. Man, for what? How much time do you invest in reading books about the business of music entertainment? You seem like a true scholar of this. I don't read no books. I mean, I read all about the music business, obviously, the Donald Pass them. You got to read that. Um, and I read like a few like, you know, other people books, but but I read articles all the time. and I watch videos, you know, the, the book shit. As you're reading the book, the information's changing. So if you start reading a book about the music business today and you finish it at the end of the week, there's information in there that was relevant during on, on Monday and is not relevant when you get done. But on the Internet, the information's always up to date. So I don't really like read the books like that no more. It's it's you know, it's kind of fucked that up. When it's come to research, you can't really depend on the the print because about time it gets printed, something's changed. Do you know how to get on the viral fifty? Yeah, I was on the viral fifty in Luxembourg. You got to get on a shit ton of playlists. I mean, you got to do a whole playlist campaign. I mean, you just got to get on like you know three hundred playlists in a day. And and hope motherfuckers really, really like the song. How you gonna lecture why your music doesn't sell, but you ain't ever really sold it? What are you talking about? The, the number one on iTunes that's not selling? That what you talking about? Number one in France. I've been fucking top three in France rap charts for four months now. That's not selling. Or when I went number three in the fucking United States. That's not selling either. Well, I was the only independent artist up there. Are the millions of streams on Spotify? Or the tens of thousands of dollars, you know, that I'm sitting on and the hundreds of thousands of dollars that's went through my account since this shit started. Like, which part is like the not selling? Now, let's see your numbers. What would you do if money was right and path is straight, but you don't have the proper people backing you? I don't even know how to answer him in that question. You know, sounds like you're not built for this because you're looking for somebody to fucking massage your ass while they're fucking you. The realist era. All right, man. I don't want to hear what the hell you're talking about. Is it possible even legal to boost streams, listen to your own music? You listen to your own music as much as you want to. You should. You get paid from that and it's your music. But you can have your song playing on your phone all day, every day. You're not going to make enough money to, to quit your job. Well, sorry. Yeah. They haven't broken any new videos. They don't break nothing. And if they do, it goes to YouTube. Those motherfuckers got their own YouTube channel. Think about that. They they were there with their own YouTube. Because you're sending your video there. And they got a channel on YouTube. I don't think YouTube has a channel on World Star Hip Hop. How do you build a foundation of solid connections when you have no friends or family that support them? Who gives a fuck? Why y'all keep looking for somebody to support you and massage your ass cheeks? You want to you want this music shit? You want to drive on this highway with a nigga like me? You got to be a motherfucking lion. And lions don't give a fuck if they got family around. Simba ain't give no fucks. He had no family around. That nigga made a new family. A motherfucking warthog and a goddamn meerkat. And he came back and he took the motherfucking kingdom because he's a for real lion. They killed his uncle. Nigga, this is what this shit is. This is what the world is. That's why the Lion King's one of the dopest movies ever. That shit's real life. Nigga, I'm a lion in this shit. If you come in here on some Cubs shit, I'm going to eat you fucking alive. Cubs worry about if people support them or not. Lions don't give a fuck. You think Spotify stream team works? I don't even know what the fuck that is. Sound like some shit that gets you niggas banned. And y'all say the man's trying to hold you back. How do you feel about virtual performance shows? Do you do them? Them shit's as corny as fuck. Unless you're like a very, very good uh, acoustic singer, you know, or um, like guitar instrumentalist, you know, something that people are used to sitting down and watching and listening to. No, like, or you got a voice like a Janae Aiko, 
like a, a background voice that when people can play to your music while they're studying or, you know, getting errands done. If you can do that, the virtual shows will be dope for you. But for rappers, nobody want to see you. <laughs> nobody want to see you. Where do you look for your beats for your songs? YouTube. You think it's still worth it to create a Facebook artist page? Yeah. Facebook owns Instagram. You know, and you might your audience might be on Facebook. And so they're gonna click on that page, they're gonna check for it. You know, Facebook groups are real popular. I mean, Facebook is is popular. And you're gonna need that for when you start running ads and shit too. Like you just don't want to just run ads on Instagram. Facebook's popular, man. Y'all gotta start sleeping on that shit. It's just massive. Everybody got a Facebook account. And niggas be on there. They say they don't, but they do. They haven't been paid. I remember when you, Dorian, yeah. I remember when you caught that new red Benz. Yeah, that, about to turn that motherfucker in. About to give me something new. Do you pay more attention to fans in the regions where your music is selling? Nope. Sure don't. Sure as fuck don't. If you have money, on, if you have your own money to market, could you blow yourself up big as, let's say, Drake? No, not even close. Drake couldn't blow himself up to be Drake on $1 million. Drake, this is year 2009. This is year 12 or 11. No, 12 for him. 12 years of branding. A million dollars. Drake's had trillions of dollars of, of branding at this point. From the memes and all that shit. Come on, man. Y'all niggas. Y'all need to study the game, bro. What do you think about World Star YouTube? Is it worth the money for marketing? Why would you give someone else money to put your music video on their channel. Like, what's that going to do for you? All the subscribers going to go to their channel. If the video goes viral, all the subscribers going to go to their channel. All the advertising money is going to go to their channel. All the traffic is going to go to their channel. You're not going to get nothing from it. You're going to get half of a look. But you're not going to get hardly any clicks. It makes no sense. Well, virtual performing live is good, but you got to make it entertaining. Also, you make money if you leave in the DNO. Do you, do interviewers ask you to show on their broadcast or the way, other way around? I don't know what you're asking. I think you asked if people hit us up to come on the podcast. Yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know there's too many people, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's very forward. It's a very, very forward thing to ask someone to come on their podcast that you don't know like that. You know, it's a very forward thing. So I mean, people got to ask you. When a beat producer sells an artist a beat over YouTube, do they get up front for the beat to retain 50%? This is how I look at that shit. If you the producer, it's your music. You need to have all your paperwork right. You need to have that shit registered. The instrumental is yours. If you upload that motherfucker and you ain't do all your paperwork right, that shit ain't yours to me because you didn't care enough. You know, so, I mean, you, you still get shit. Don't get me wrong. But the moment that that artist buys that beat and you didn't do the paperwork right and they start adjusting the drums, they start taking this away, they start taking out that element, they start EQing, start compressing, start, you know, They've reproduced that song and they're doing their paperwork right. So you were part of inspiration, no question. But how much are you really entitled to when you ain't handling your business? That's how I look at this YouTube beat shit. Like too many producers just don't, don't do what they're supposed to do. And, and they miss out. I mean, y'all are missing out on millions of dollars. There's there's millions of dollars being generated every day that independent producers who ain't got that many followers, subscribers at all would be getting paid. Millions of dollars. All because y'all want to have y'all paperwork right. Y'all niggas deserve to lose. 
Be, it has never been an easier time in the history of music to be a producer and make it a full-time income. It is beyond easy. If you know how to make beats and you say your shit slapping, right, and you got your presets, you know how long it takes you to make a beat, you know what your favorite pads are, synths are, you got all the plugins, you got the system, I mean, you got it. You got the good ear, you know how to mix, you know how to master, you know how to send, you know, the finals. And then the ones that the rappers gonna rap on to leave the headroom. If you if you know how to do all that shit and your shit is knocking, it has never been easier for you to do this shit full time in the history, in the history of music. If I was a producer like that, like I wasn't a rapper, like if I was a producer like that, I would make five to seven beats a day and I would upload every fucking one. The amount of money y'all can make is insane. It's insane. Producers, producers got the best out of everybody in this music business shit right now. And y'all still trying to chase placements with Drake. Whatever. What's your say on Google Ads for YouTube? I ain't ran no Google Ads, so I can't really speak to them. I can tell you about Facebook and Instagram ads. You know, I'm Facebook ad certified. You know, nigga, that, that came from, from them niggas. You know what I'm saying? So Facebook and Instagram ads, I can tell you all about them. But YouTube ads, you know, I, I'm not a specialist yet. I will be, though. Spotify stream teams where 100 other artists around the world stream the same players with their song on it. Yeah, that sounds like some bot bullshit to get you banned, brother. What books did you read to get your knowledge? I watched a lot of videos. I took a lot of classes that were free. Um, you know, and I I've mentioned the books I've read. I actually have a book list. If you go to my Website, go to group 82 music.com. That shit clipping a little bit. Go to group 82 music.com um, backslash uh, link in bio or click the link in my bio on um, Instagram. And now I'm worried about the levels. She was clipping and shit. Click it on Instagram. And then once you click it, go down. And I got my book list on there. You buy it off of Amazon, I get paid. Because, you know, I like the fact that y'all are, like, really into that book shit. You know, that's that's cool. But, you know, a lot of people just, like, just be saying shit, just be saying shit. All right, my fault. I'm looking at, like, the levels as I'm, I pulled up Logic so that way I can see where my levels are in the mixer. It's crazy. Like, a month ago, I didn't know any of this shit. Now I'm really starting to pick up on it. Should you move like you're the artist, even if you're also the producer, engineer? You move like you. Whatever you do, you move like you. You, know, you feel like an artist that day, move like an artist. You feel like an engineer that day, you feel like an engineer. You feel like a producer. Nigga, everybody needs a fucking brand, no matter how you move anymore. How many points are there in the album? 100. A lot of producers get bumped. How often should you do ads when you want a low budget? I can't tell you that because I don't know what your budget is and I don't know what your objective is. You got to know what you're trying to accomplish. If you don't know what you're trying to accomplish by running ads, you shouldn't be running ads. Once you know you, what you're trying to accomplish, nigga, that's when you can start talking about numbers. Paperwork. Got to see you still spreading the knowledge. No doubt, Shotgun Shane. You still got a network. You just sell beats and get paid via cash app. It ain't getting paid via cash app. You're getting, like, beats is residual money. There's music in everything. Beats is residual income. Like, nigga, motherfuckers need beats for videos now more than ever before. And now if your beast is on Instagram, they on YouTube, they on TikTok, Facebook, you're getting paid off of all that shit. Like you niggas, I'm, I'm telling you, it's insane. Cause it's this nigga, it's way easier to make a beat than to make a song. And everybody knows that. Nigga, you can make a beat and have that motherfucker mastered in fucking 20 minutes. Nigga, make a song, have it mix and master. That takes hours. The amount of money, y'all should be flooding. You don't even, and then beats talk. Beats got their own personalities. So you ain't even got to show your face. You don't even have to make any other content. That's how powerful beats are. You don't have to make any other content. And that shit can elevate you to a fucking millionaire in like 18 months. Y'all niggas is crazy. I don't know what the fuck band lab is. 
Surely I appreciate the information. What kind of paperwork is supposed to be handled for sale in order to cover the rent or to upload? Split sheets. Split sheets, and then y'all got to decide on your own how y'all want to upload y'all shit. I mean, you want to have them niggas sign some legal doom, whatever. Hey, you got to decide that shit. I don't know. But the fact you niggas, like, this, no, it's, this motherfucker's selling beats on YouTube, making thousands a month and don't even have an IPI number. Shit crazy out here, nigga. Where should producers upload their beats? I just told y'all, YouTube. When they get stolen on YouTube. No. What are you talking about? Anybody that's downloading a, a YouTube to MP3 and still on the beat, you don't need to worry about them. They're not going to do nothing. And then on top of that, when they post it, because it has the content ID on there, your shit is going to get linked to you. And you're going to get paid off of it. And it's proof. Let's say the beat does blow up. And it ends up in like the next Spider Man. You can be like, uh, I'll blow that motherfucker three years ago. Give me that Spider Man cake. Y'all make music for it to get heard. You complain about it getting heard. Right. I didn't learn how to build my own channel. I put my first video on the person who shot my video page because he had a bigger platform, 100,000 more subscribers. Started my YouTube channel six months. Do you think there's really blocks clicking on your ass to run your budget zero? Probably. I don't know. All I know is this. When I run Facebook and Instagram ads, we always win. So we always win. Camera is a uh, Canon SL2. This is my iPhone right here. iPhone. Don't underestimate that motherfucker. Thank you for the business idea for digital marketing. <laughs> this nigga's crazy. What's the best strategy for upcoming artists to gain exposure? Post every day, man. Post every day. You want people to look at you every day? Get in front of them every day. I'm not trying to sound dumb, but I make a beat out on YouTube, then what? How they selling them? You upload them shits. Nigga, you sell them through the beat store. Beat stars, whatever it is. Nigga, you can distribute that shit through a distributor. You can put it on Spotify and Apple Music, too. You get money off of that. Good shit. How do you target a certain demographic from Facebook, Instagram ads? You pick the demographic. They literally ask you who you targeting on that motherfucker. They they literally ask you that shit. You just put what you want. I want white women over the age of 56 who wear a size 7 to 8 shoe and who play pinochle on the weekends. Like, They're going to run your ad, nigga, to every grandma in America. A lot of producers spend more time trying to copyright their beats from the public than they do trying to bring their beats to the public. Niggas is weak. Dorian, what up? Glad to have you back with us. No doubt, man. Appreciate you. Nah, niggas is weak. You know, they weak as fuck. Like, so, and when you dropping your next album and shit, man, I'm working on a bunch of shit right now. You know, I'm glad y'all keep asking, you know, but, you know, man, when you're trying to build your own vertical, it's always something. You got to adjust. You got to shift with the times, too, you know. So, like, it's, um, yeah, we we going to be on it. We going to be on it, though. Man, but this class going to be that shit. This class is going to be that shit. I'm telling y'all, that class going to be killer. Best way to spend $100 per release for promotion. It matters what your objectives are. <laughs> like, I, you know, I, like you can't just say that. Like, what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to sell a certain number of units? Where are you trying to sell a certain number of units? Are you trying to get a certain number of streams? Where are you trying to get a certain number of streams? Are you trying to sell T-shirts? You trying to chart on iTunes? You trying to hit the Shazam chart? You trying like, what are you trying to do? Because you know, hundred dollars ain't gonna get you all that shit. So, what are you trying to do? When you say, okay, this is what I'm trying to do, then you can develop a plan. Y'all just be saying, if I put money behind it, it's not how this works. You got to have a plan on what you want the money to do. 
when you walk in the roof, Chris, and you pay them motherfuckers for for a ch- stuffed chicken breast, like you know, hey, I'll order that. I'll give you money for that. That motherfucker need to be in front of me with that chicken breast stuffed with that delicious whatever. You know, so that's you got to know what you want to do. When you know that, then you can have a plan. Appreciate all y'all, man. Chris Jackson, appreciate the two dollars. How you feel, bro? I feel pretty good, man. Appreciate you asking, man. Sean, Dorian is spending money you made from the streams, creating the image of the independent arts of your strategy. Hell yeah, shit, man. That money you get from that stream, reinvest that shit. That's 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 your money, man. That's your money. That's that shit feel good as hell. That's your fucking money. You 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 thought of some shit up here and set it into this. That fed into that, that fed into the goddamn phone, the iPad or the computer, that fed into Fruity Loops, Logic, Pro Tools, Ableton. And you just, y'all turned some knobs and added some shit, laughed and got high, and drunk, drunk a little bit, and you know, got it back. And you took that file and you uploaded it through DistroKid and went all over the world. And enough people listen to what you did that started up here where there's tangible money you can put in your hands and go spend on stuff that you need to survive on this world, to survive on this earth. Man, that shit is fucking amazing. Every artist should love that. Take that money and put that shit right back into your shit so you can keep making more. Or anyway, a mainstream level, but with an independent la- label of good budget. It matters what you consider mainstream once again. If you want to be on the top of the billboard and win Grammys and, you know, be on the front cover of Time Magazine, no. Because they own all that shit. But if you want to go and win... I'll sell these niggas on iTunes and, you know, and sell out stadiums that hold just as many, if not more people and all that. And, you know, yeah, you can get to that. Hell yeah. What are your thoughts on being humble in industry? Is it bullshit somewhat? I don't even know what that means. I feel like that's just something you should be as a human. Vacaville, what about it? I'm going to need you to inbox you on some heat, bro. It'll be a lovely belated birthday gift for me. I'll ask you, let me borrow your ear, bro. No, man. No. You know, you're asking for my time. You're not, you're not worth my time. As you say, it's a belated birthday gift for you. What do I get out of that? that that's a one-sided relationship. That's like telling a chick who you just met, like, shit, you should let me fuck because it's my birthday. I'm just asking for two minutes of your body so I can bust a nut. Thank you for the birthday gift. What did, what did she get out of that? It's the same thing. And y'all asking for my ear. That's my body too, nigga. Like, no. We have showcases for a reason. You like that shit? You're not scared of that shit? You bring that shit in there, you pay your $50, and you get the real feedback. Quit trying to buy my body. You heard of Rob from Smart Rapper? Yeah, I seen his stuff. I seen his stuff. You should bring him on to the podcast. You know, um, I mean, I'd be open to a conversation. Late, but I got to say this. Yeah, we here. Keep on getting greater, man. This channel is fire. and like to do the buzz. Say it's good to see you back up and running. No doubt. I'm going to work out tomorrow. I'm ready to get back. I'm going to start doing that. You're at gym, man. Keep with the great work. Thanks for the knowledge. Appreciate that, Jesse. What is this identifier you speak of? Is that provided through DistroKid or BMI or YouTube? Man, anybody, anybody that knows this, go look up YouTube content ID. Like, go look it up. And go look at where beat makers get their YouTube content IDs. You can ask Google this shit. This is what I'm talking about, man. This is a natural, genuine curiosity I was talking about in the beginning of the of the video of the live that I'm doing and why y'all music don't sell. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You should fucking know about YouTube content ID if you're a beat maker. Motherfuckers is getting paid for their beats getting played on YouTube. People getting paid for their music getting played on Facebook. 
They're getting paid for TikTok. They're getting paid for Instagram. They're getting paid when their music getting played on Shazam. They're getting paid. They're getting fucking paid. How do you not know this? Can you give me an idea? Guess how much money it costs to get my song played on Hot 95 Flex Radio Station? It's Hot 97, man. So, Sean, I appreciate the 499. It's Hot 97, number one. It ain't Hot 95. Number two, why do you care? Who in here listened to Hot 97 today for more than five minutes? Because they're they're the most popular hip hop radio station in the world. Okay. If you who in here listened to Hot 97 today for more than five minutes straight for more than five minutes? Who? Show me one one person. If 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 you did that, type hot 97. Now, if you at some point today listen to a podcast, listen to Spotify, listen to a YouTube video in your headphones for more than five minutes straight. Type in what it is that you listen to today for five minutes straight. And you tell me why the fuck you would want to pay for a radio campaign at all anymore. What's, who, no one's listening to the radio. Why do you niggas keep giving them money? I don't understand. Yeah, crypto, I'm, I'm, I'm light on it. I'm light on crypto. I'm light on it. I consider the Grammys mainstream performing on GMA and today's today show mainstream. That is. All that shit is, is, is mainstream. Remember the turning point of your career? Like, what was your biggest personal accomplishment or struggle? Um, turning point? Man, it was, it was a few. You know, um, when I released Sunshine and it got a positive feedback to my very, very, very limited uh, circle of feedback at that time. Um, When I moved to LA and the first engineer that I ever worked with, you know, was good. And the first song we worked on together, the first session was Don't Sleep. And then that song went on to be my most successful song to date. When my um, music video for Sunshine got played in every journey to North America. When I got 1 million streams total the first time. And then, um, I think the I think the main turning point, I mean, well, when my album charted on iTunes, that was a fucking big one too. I think the main turning point for me was like when I realized that, you know, my brand was becoming a lot more active than I was. Anybody that's ever built a business or brand, you know what I'm talking about. You know, because when you first starting off building a business or a brand, you are way more active than your brand is because that your brand is like a baby. It can't even fucking move. It just lays there like, you know, you're telling me to do shit, but I can't do shit. Like, like you, you put all this time into this shit and your brand's just not helping at all. But as you keep putting more time, you keep nurturing it. You keep feeding it. You keep talking to it. And you know, like eventually it uncrosses his eyes and opens his arms and, you know, you can see it do it a little bit. Oh, shit. It's trying to stand up. Oh, you fell down again. Fuck. But at least you try to stand up like your brand is doing all that. And then eventually it gets to the point where your brand is talk up, right, talking, running, same size as you. And then your brand is going out doing more than you are when you're awake. Your brand is doing more for you when you're asleep that you are doing for it when you're awake. That's when I was like, oh, shit. This is, this is, I I hit another stratosphere. Like, when I got on YouTube and it, it kind of, like, explosion I got, I was like, okay, all right. This is, and then I got verified on Instagram. I was like, and then I went number one on iTunes. All right, this is, this is what I was supposed to be doing. How many sales did you get your first week to hit iTunes charts with True Support album? I think it was 720, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe or maybe 420. One of them. I, how much? No, 718, I think. I think it was 718. But I think we have more than that. 
like pre-orders. We had like a, over a thousand pre-orders. But, you know, people might have canceled or something. Ain't no tell them. Isn't YouTube content ID something about copyright? Yeah, but you can put your stuff in there too. Like if y'all start playing any of my music, YouTube content ID picks it up. And if y'all if all if y'all video starts making advertising money, I get paid too. What up, D? Does it make sense to run ads if your music don't organically create a buzz? No, and that's a good question. You know, you gotta run ads for the don't put paid marketing before the free marketing. You know, like Paid marketing will always get you a broader and a more direct reach, always. You know, but free marketing gets you a much more genuine, rich reach. What I mean by that is like the things you can do to market for free, right? Uploading to your personal Facebook account, tweeting about it, putting it on YouTube, putting it on your Instagram account that has 300 followers, you know, put it in a blog post, put it in Reddit, put it in, you know, emailing it to people. Like if if it usually that stuff doesn't work because it's free and everybody's doing it. So that's that's why it doesn't work. But if your shit pops in that realm, oh my God, you got something. So now you need to pay, put the pay on top of it. Because you can do the pay marketing like Facebook ads, Instagram ads, all that starting off. But because it's paid and it's more direct, it's more broad, it's gonna make it look like that you're getting a good return on it. But the moment you stop paying for it, it's not even coming over to the free marketing lane and doing anything. So now you kind of just waste that money. Motherfuckers in here going in on high 97. They all play the same shit. Why don't you promote Sunshine on? sunshine more and people keep saying that i mean maybe i should maybe i should start running ads for it you know it's i mean hell y'all keep asking fuck it fuck it once i learn on youtube and google ads i'll start running ads for that motherfucker appreciate that man i love your content but watch your videos i'm learning a lot from it appreciate you watching and lakers getting smacked I think people want their song played on the radio because they want the exposure from the people who listen to the station we all just said we don't listen to the station there is no exposure. There is none. Instagram is 10,000 times more powerful than the radio ever will, will be. Instagram, YouTube, like it's, it makes no sense to spend it. The radio should be free. That's what I was just talking about, all that free, free marketing shit. The radio should be free now. It should be like a fucking tweet. It should be like a blog post, okay, on some website that gets eight monthly visitors. Like that's what the radio should be. That's how shitty it is now. It's it's just no one listens to it. So it should be, well, shit, you popped on the radio. Damn, it must be good because nobody listens to the fucking radio. This dude just giving game. Mad Fire Entertainment. ASCAP, Sound Exchange, Airbit, and Song Trust. That's all you need, beat makers. I get a check every month. Airbit has constant ID. There you go. Who are some artists that you thought about working with in the near future? No, nobody. <laughs> nobody how'd you manage your career once your daughter was born to have her change the way you did things uh it didn't really change because i was already a full-time entrepreneur when she was born um you know see the thing about my daughter she didn't sleep i was just talking to her grandmother about this like she didn't sleep like y'all think i'm joking she wouldn't sleep like girls slept like three four hours a day she still don't sleep like, she's just wired, you know? And so, like, I couldn't get shit done during the day. Everybody else about their baby sleep like eight hours, 12 hours, 18 hours a day. Bullshit. My child, she didn't sleep. So that was the only thing because her mom was still working, you know? So I was at the crib with her all day trying to make content and write copy and return emails and process orders, get you on playlists and, you know, while my baby's not sleeping. Like it's crazy. That was the that was the only thing. Everything else, you know, she she makes me go harder because I get the freedom of being around her. You know, is really in, enjoyable. It is a good idea to pay for a big feature. No, no, if they give your main artist rights to the artist. No, big features ain't worth it. 
I live by your quote. You have to do everything yourself. Nobody's going to help you do shit. You should put out a shirt or something. This shit's real, man. I swear to God. You you got to mentally put yourself in that mentality. There ain't nobody going to help you do shit. And, you know, you start getting more help when you start paying people and shit like that. But it's still the amount of stuff I still have to do. Y'all wouldn't believe. Y'all wouldn't believe that I still have to do a lot of the things that I do. Like, I'm just so used to it. Fuck it. I'm, I'm never going to be in a position where administratively, I'm not going to have my hand in on something. I, I can't. I just don't trust motherfuckers enough. Did you care about your career early in your rap, rap career? Did hate or doubt ever get to you? Hell yeah, it did. Hell yeah. I didn't realize people were so fucking mean. To artists. Cause I'm I'm not mean to artists, you know. Like I was shocked. Like, why are y'all so mean, man? You know, and that uh, it definitely affected me. You know, what I mean, it 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 affected how I um made music in the future. You know, it made me kind of like apprehensive about my about my voice and you know me not understanding mixing and shit and the whole first album. Like I I had a bad engineer he he was just bad he wasn't good at what he was doing you know and so like it was just really weird you know i didn't know like i i didn't know and so once i started learning people kept hating and then you know once it goes on for a year two years or three years now it's like okay you still talking shit but you know some a lot of people will still share they would share the shit you know, so at least they were sharing and they were supporting, putting the links in their bio, changing. I appreciate them doing that. But if some people that kept talking shit, it's like, okay, you just a hating ass bitch. You know, and I had to tell people that. And I had to face people that head on. I had to cut people off. You know, because you realize how many people want to do this. You realize how many people want to make music. And when they see you start having success, they, they can't help themselves because they bitch ass, pussy ass, hoe ass niggas. Like the, the fucking pussy assness has to leave their body. They have to let you know that they're a pussy. And you see it. it. You can smell it fucking from 472 miles away. It allows you to eliminate motherfuckers. When I got a blue check, niggas was mad. It's cornball shit. Shit, Russell's giving y'all content, nigga. That was real fucked up how you put that, but I definitely respect that. However, Buff Nation Bullet Club, we're going to show you how we work for anyone's time. See you in your next showcase. How you do it, man? You know, y'all niggas need to stop asking to buy buy niggas' ears, man. Don't nobody want to hear your music, bro. And when they have shit that gives you an opportunity to play your music, like, that's where you need, need to go. The amount of links you niggas DM me that I don't even look at is insane. You're wasting fucking thumb energy. Like, you're getting that much closer to having arthritis when you're 78 years old because you kept DMing me your links that I wasn't reading. Save that thumb. Save that thumb so your arthritis doesn't kick in until you're 81. Get another three years of free thumb movement. Stop DMing me that shit. I had no idea an individual was supposed to run in millions of streams for real. Get on multiple players as that reach the masses. Because the playlists got different reaches. What are you talking about? You get know, as many playlists as, as you can. Listen, I got millions of streams. Either you want to listen to what I got to say or you don't. You know, you get on a shit ton of playlists. You shop playlists every day. And you can keep pushing that shit. You got a music video with it. Motherfucker, you're going to get a million streams. You do that shit for, for 12 months. We, we're not even three months into this year yet. So I'm talking 12 months. You had a whole year? Please, you definitely going to get a million streams. I got offered a single release to a label that claims affiliation is Sony ATV. Can I drop your DM and show you contract? No, you, you don't have to. I've seen them before. That there, why would they approach you like that, man? Why would they send you? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. How people get whole music videos played during other YouTube creators' videos? Ads. You can do that tonight. Upload your music video, put it in the ad tonight. 
the other year on crypto, man, I'm not, I'm not, I ain't with that right now. I'm, I'm very light on it. It's not, I'm, y'all need to stop telling other men who making money what they need to be doing with their money. You know what I'm saying? If a nigga ain't come to you asking you for money advice, I don't need you to be telling me what to do with my money. You don't know nothing about my pockets. You don't know what we got going on over here. You don't know what I make a day. So there's no reason for you to be telling me what I should be doing with my money. You don't know what my portfolio looks like. When people ask you for your opinion on it, then go right ahead. But you niggas be giving unsolicited financial advice to niggas that's got money. I don't want to hear anything you got to say, bro. I ain't asked you for it. So why do y'all keep pushing that shit? And it, it, it destroys the brand of what y'all are trying to do. Because the way Bitcoin goes up, the more people talk about it. But if y'all keep being some hoe-ass, bitch-ass, and hey, you need to be doing this Jehovah Witness-ass niggas, it's going to fuck with the coin. Just be cool about it, man. Most want to buy it, they buy it, they don't, they don't. Like, there's no reason for you to be having it in random-ass conversations. Like, y'all y'all weird with that shit. Appreciate you listening to Dope, man, no doubt. True billions, no doubt. People still listen to the radio. Man, ain't nobody listening to that motherfucking radio unless they in a fucking Uber, nigga. Fuck out of here. And definitely ain't nobody listening to the radio that spends money on music. Bro used to be on, Russ used to be on a label. He's from Mark. All that. Django Radio. That shit trash, too. I've been on that shit. That shit whack. How do you feel about rappers leasing beats? Is it a good business move? Yeah. Just get the music, nigga. I'm wrong with it. Did your song, do you name your song Don't Sleep Cause Your Work Ethic? I named it Don't Sleep Cause the beat was called Don't Sleep. <laughs> and I tell y'all, I was trying to write the most simple song ever. Like, it's not an exaggeration. I was trying to write the most simple song ever without it making it seem like it was some uh, ABC one, two, three shit. Like, I still had to mask it. I was trying to write the most simple song ever. And it's my most popular song. That's what this is the shit that I'm telling y'all. I did not overthink anything about I, I take that back. I did overthink shit on Don't Sleep because I was trying to make it a little more complicated. And I had to strip myself down. Like, nah, I flex hard. I stun. Lord, nigga, just make it simple as fuck. Who cares? Song got like what 30 words? Don't overthink, don't sleep. That was literally like a science experiment for me. And the shit worked. Shit changed my life. <laughs> I love don't sleep. How many streams does it consistently take independently for labels to be interested in signing you? I don't know. Shit. Ain't no labels hitting me up. They know I ain't with that shit. They all they both the same. Ask after BMI. Sean, my fault. 499. Appreciate the badge, bro. Do you believe if one independent artist who made a major hit and reinvested millions could become a mega superstar? Yeah, absolutely. If I was, man, you know, ain't no if I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, and you'll see. And people are going to be like, how the fuck did he? Like, okay. You know, because I've had this like jet propulsion under my ass since I started this shit. And motherfuckers are just now seeing me. It's like, man, y'all, about time y'all recognize what I'm on, who I am, it's going to be way too late for a lot of you motherfuckers, man. That's why I keep telling y'all, like, you know, just build your build your rocket. Cause I, I got one. I got a rocket, and that motherfucker's flying. It's been flying. You know? It's just a matter of time before that rocket's so big and my flame is the is the brightest blue, and everybody like, oh, shit! You see Duck Rocket? This Tori and Goobetti, too! Man, Adam So, y'all gonna see. What do you like to do on your own the most as an independent artist? It's writing the music. Making make, making the music is the funnest shit. <laughs> That's the funnest shit. You know, writing the music, writing the songs. I believe. You give up a lot of game, brother. Music from our record company, Hit Rock Entertainment, making so much money on Spotify now. Every month getting fat checks. Congrats, man. I love getting tough love from dudes who are way ahead of the game. It's like big brother being smart enough, and you'll be like me one day. For real, but it's real shit, man. 
you know, because like I told you, man, I'm a lion in this motherfucker. You know, you got to be a lion too. Even if that's not your personality, people got to know what's in there. And so if if you can't handle this lion, you're not going to be able to handle any of the other lions in this motherfucker. Because I'm such a lion in this motherfucker, the other lions don't even fuck with me. And not because, like, they couldn't or whatnot. It's just, you know, why even go deal with that big-ass lion? So, like, I'm I'm literally protecting y'all from a lot of shit when I come at y'all like that. And I'm testing you and I'm getting you ready. Because if you can deal with me and get past it, you can handle them other motherfuckers. Now, I don't know if they're going to treat you like they treat me. But they might. Or they might try to attack your ass. You know what I'm saying? But that's why I'm trying to see who the lions are. So that way, when that shit happens, nigga, we all good. Strength in numbers. To me, get rich quick, people. Dead ass. I was raised a JW. Had to get out. This four ace niggas annoying. They are, bro. What does the perfect indie artist team look like? You need a, um, you need a digital marketer. Well, no. First of all, you need graphic design. Somebody that does like um, logos, flyers, and Instagram content, emails. Like you need graphic design. That's number one. Number two, you need a photographer slash videographer. They need to be able to do both. If they're just if they're a good videographer, you know what I'm saying. Um, then there will be a decent photographer because you can just take the steals. You know. You need video editors. You need video editors. And then um, that's a digital marketer. I don't know if I said that or not. But you need you need those. You got if you gotta have those. If if you have that, y'all y'all can learn everything else. Of course you gotta make the music and shit, you know. Call, so you can listen to <laughs> Brain's hilarious. <laughs> y'all crazy, bro. y'all crazy as hell. I remember Doja Cat got her start on Periscope. She's a scope making beats and saying, I can see that. She's a she's a yeah, she's a dumb one, man. She's another one of our sisters that got lost. They got brainwashed on some crazy shit. You know, she's like she's she's a Ben Dick Arnold. Like she can't be trusted. She don't need to be around. Black people at all. Like she's not that she ain't she ain't it. She doesn't understand at all. She doesn't need to be around black people. I don't I wouldn't trust that at all. You know, if she could have been like one like a real power on our side, because she's talented as fuck. You know, but she can't be trusted, man. She'll throw gonna rich a couple of months. All right, man. You think it's better to write a freestyle album, mixtape, shit, whatever makes the better music. Isaiah, man, you always being here, man. What's up, bro? A lot of people don't like when you're straight up, which is backwards, because they used to be in lied to. You used to be in lied to. You know, if you backwards, you don't like going forwards. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was going to make some inappropriate shit, but I ain't going to say that, but they're not, they're not used to real shit. To all independent artists, what do you think is the best tool for marketing? And that's what you're trying to accomplish, man. Nobody wants to be down to you win it. Who distributes your music? I use DistroKid. It, the link is in the description box. So people just want some of the vibes who are easy to sing when they listen to a song. That's part of it. Some people come to music for escapism. Some people come to music to relate. Some people come to music to get inspired financially. Some people come to music to feel... Uh, shared suffering financially. Some people come to music to get over a heartbreak. Some people come to music to get horny. You know, everybody comes to music for different reasons. You got to make the music that you want. That's why I always ask y'all, like in a showcase, what arena do you see people listening to this music? What emotions do you see attached to this song? And once you can figure that out, you know, make music for those arenas and those emotions. And then you'll always be able to have a song that makes money. Don't sleep. It's for niggas that want to lift in the gym or you have that motherfucker banging in your whip. You just like, nigga, this beat fucking knocks. Fuck it. 
Fuck it. That's all don't sleep is. That's all it is. You know, and that's where it gets the most bang. You know, so it's like, nigga, I get paid off of that. That emotion ain't going nowhere where niggas just like, nigga, fuck it. Nigga, like, trying to get hype. Nigga, whether, I mean, don't sleep might be a war chant one day. We don't know. We don't know. That's why I made that shit. You mean, sunshine's for when you over the summer by the pool. It's just letting loose, feeling free. You out in Cali smoking some good, nigga. You, you know what I mean? That feeling ain't going nowhere. Make make music about feelings, nigga, in arenas. Where at? When you can visualize that, now you got the music video. You already got the treatment. And you're able to convey that through the performance that gets recorded on the track. Never. Y'all niggas is crazy. Like, cult shit doesn't convince people. Crypto cults just like, y'all niggas is crazy, man. You know what I mean? Like, y'all getting Reddit shut down. They better relax. I keep telling these motherfuckers, it's like, listen, there's one major, 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 major drawback to crypto. At any given moment, the United States government can say, this is our crypto coin that you're going to use and can only be accepted in these 50 states. Nothing else will work here. And if you want to convert from another crypto coin, we take 78%. And there will be nothing fucking Bitcoin could do. You could buy black market shit. You can you still you still find a way, but the value of Bitcoin would drop. It, it would get down to like a thousand dollars, if not lower, in a in a matter of fucking ten minutes. That's the problem with it. So, you know, I think eventually it's getting protected because of Tesla and Apple, and you know, it's becoming more mainstream. So you don't see NBC every day. So Elon Musk, like you know, so yeah, but it's still Forex, essentially. I don't know what six nine do. I know y'all niggas always thinking about him, so he doing something right. Sell, not sell. Can't get nothing past you, Nutward. Nutward TV to the rescue. Thanks, bitch. How do you start understanding what lane your music was in? Sometimes artists think they're versatile, trouble finding their sound. Yeah, I mean. Trying to be shit, fucking jack of all trades, master of none, like. You know, can't do that. You got to find where people fuck with you at. Experiment with your voice. Experiment with beats. Experiment with different topics. That's all you, because you're a dynamic individual. If you think you're versatile, then you're dynamic, and see see which one people resonate with the most, the most. And that's that's you. That's your lane. Drake's lane was like, I can rap to women. That's how I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna be the the male rapper for women. I'm gonna. Where I, under, where I let them know I understand I can relate to him while singing. And once he did that, he's he, Drake been every rapper under the sun now. Why does this show kid pay out three months late and two corn pays out weekly? Hell if I know. Like I said, I wish I'd known two corn pays out weekly when, uh, you know, I, uh, Man, I might switch my shit over to TuneCore, bro. <laughs> I'm just all about that shit. <laughs> I think, I think, I think I might. I'm for real, man. I think I might switch all my shit over, man. I wouldn't mind getting paid every week, man. That 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 just feels better. Shit. Give us one example when someone clicked in something something clicked in your head and they really keep going with YouTube or the music. Nigga, Tupac told me in a dream to stay in my lane before I even fucking knew what logic was. You know, Tupac, well, I knew what logic was, but Tupac told me to stay in my lane. Tupac came to me in a fucking dream and said that. I'm not lying. It's crazy as shit. One of the most vivid dreams I've ever had in my life. 
It's really smart to think about what a song will be heard when you're writing it. You got to. You got to. It's all pretty simple, huh? Just show the fuck up. Yep. Peace, bro. Do you have any books you invested in? Yeah, you go to my uh, Instagram, my link in my bio. I got my book list on there. So just click that, go to book list. It takes you to my Amazon store. You know, you can see all the books I fuck with. Buy them bitches, I get paid. Dave Grohl had a great story about how he picked up the rhythm and BPM for all my life, just jumping up and down the way people would at concert. Damn. you! Hey, if you know where that clip is, send me that, Brayton. If you if you can find that clip, send me, DM me that uh, clip, man. Please. I would love to see that. That's, that's how it is, man. Music is it's the, it's the language of the earth. Fact, if Will Smith had made Summertime, our shit would be the most streamed song every summer. For real. I swear to God. Yeah, he 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 envisioned it. <laughs> so I say it going in on forex. I've seen I've never seen so many people advertise something so much like cryptos, like they're paid promoters. They are, they are paid promoters, and they're invested in the shit. But that's what I'm saying. It's a it's a cult. Now, cults never work out great, especially for black people. Over recording, you heard that before? Nah, brother. Then laugh out loud. Click my question. Switch and switch second. I missed your shit. My fault, bro. Tune core is pretty fire. Tune core is whack. Charges per release. I mean, I don't see nothing wrong with that. <laughs> shit. Can you put out different genres and stick to one? If you whatever people like me, you do. If you had to start from the bottom again and only had two grand in your name. How would you invest it? With that team I just told you about, and I would figure out which of the skills. As an artist, you got to have, you know, one of four skills. The ability to make the music, the ability to market the music, the ability to make content to market the music, and the ability to talk about the music. You got to have one of those four. And whichever one you have, okay, lock in and, and concentrate on that skill. And then make sure you use your resources to hire other people on those skills. Like for me, like I knew I would have the ability to market and talk about my music and to make it somewhat. But I had to make a decision early on. Like, do I want to learn how to make the best music that I fucking can, which is probably going to take me like four years to really learn like mixing and mastering and the different like automation, all this shit. Like, I mean, like, cause I could have locked the fuck in and, and came out this musical wizard. But I wouldn't have spent any time learning the marketing. I would have been working for other people, all that shit. And I can't make money until I work on the marketing. And the marketing can be used in other skills, like for me to make money. So I made a decision, like, let me become the best music marketer, digital marketer that I can be. And then I'll catch up the music shit later, which is what I'm doing now. You know, so you just got to decide. And so, and then I hire, I hire graphic design, I hire video. So now I got all the sales and, mar- and I hire like the engineer. So I got all the sales and marketing. I got all that, right? I got majority of the music making, right? Got my engineer for that. Then I hired graphic design video. Quit advertising and mixtape in here. No one cares. This is random. I'm reading from Periscope. Rest in peace of Periscope. Yeah, that's fucked up, man. Fucking Periscope, man. I'm making this happy ass song with a sample right now. I can see it being played in the summer in the cards. So I gotta do it. This nigga here talking about what he got from Guitar Center. Damn, okay, bro. Yeah, swear to God. 95% business, 5% talent, as I always said. Now, that's about right. That's, that's, that's about right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's man, that's people be like the music business is like 70, 70, 30. Like, no, it ain't. No, the fuck is not. It's like, it's like 95, 5. Like you, so I'm glad I made that decision because I would have got really good in the five and had to learn that whole 95 while getting older, while having a child, while I mean working for other people. That would have been exhausting. I learned the 95. Now I'm working on that other five. The marketing books. Shit, it's all types of shit online, man. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. It's crazy, man. 
That's what I'm saying. It's like this is not no nap town was good. So I'll be saying, man, this is this is not like a like a fly by night thing, you know. If you don't want to really dedicate and turn this into a career, you you need to quit. That's why your music ain't selling. People can sense that shit. You still saying that? Hell no, too damn cold. I think the growth story is from the back and forth Foo Fighters doc. Yeah, okay, cool. But yeah, man, you got to, uh, like, niggas just be on some bullshit. You know, y'all don't really want it. When you really want it, nothing's going to get in your way with this shit. Nothing. <laughs> Miss Sarah, yeah. Go to my Instagram. Click the link in my bio and scroll down in my books. Shit's at the bottom. Click that. Takes you to your to my Amazon store, and you can buy the books on there. The ones I rock with and I get money off of. Um, well, yeah, you know, there's so many free ways to get your music out. I mean, it's just it's crazy, man. The money I've made from YouTube, like this month's gonna be super light on YouTube because power went out. You know, we had COVID. You know. I was hot. My energy was focused in other places, nigga, and I'm still going to pull in a solid amount. <laughs> like, you know, like, it's crazy, man. When you're making a video 31 jobs, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's I got to be in the mood for it. I'm in high school. I'm trying to complete this school work so I can do this shit. Absolutely. Sean, 499. Appreciate that, bro. Last question. If I go all out and spend money only on a social media management team as an indie artist, can I be a mainstream superstar? Nah, you nah, you won't. Nah, you won't. Because there's so many other things that's, that's just as important as social media. You know, if you try to just play the social media game and that's it, you're going to be doing all types of crazy shit. Social media changes too much. Like when you were just like known for being on social media, that's it. Like you don't have any other substance balance around it because you're not good at anything else like you are going to be chasing that fucking carrot for as long as you can you're going to be going from fucking doing dances to memes to silhouette challenges to planking on luggage to fucking pointing at the screen on beat and shit to bouncing like a fucking rabbit and she like you got to do everything you got to do it all because that's you, you ain't good at nothing else i mean so don't just have a social media management team because they just going to get you good at social media. And nigga, that, fuck that. If you naturally make a different style of music than your most popular lead song, how do you find your real audience? Stop being so goddamn inconsistent and find an audience that likes your music no matter what because you've given them what they wanted for years and then give them the weirdo shit. So Kendrick did. He gave niggas what they wanted, and he gave the, then he made to pimp a butterfly. I'm a graphic designer. Three years in marketing experience. Let will help anyone out. Just now got inspired to make music. If I was only known on social media, no, I would be on YouTube making merch store. No, you shit don't. I'm in marketing team, not management. It's the same thing. It's the same fucking thing. You know, like, don't matter what they call themselves. You're going to start off on social media. You got to have other shit going. Like, I, I didn't start off as a social media nigga. I started off as music business. I started off as an artist. That's what I started off as, artist, okay? And as an artist, I had to learn the music business. Became knowledgeable about the music business, had to learn how to market. Learn how to market, had to use social media. And because I'm unique in who I am and my personality, became a social media person. But I... I didn't go straight to it. So if the social media person shit cuts off, I still had I still know how to do the other shit. SoundCloud is a good space for any artists that people deem other SoundCloud rappers. For real. That ass. You know, so like you gotta, it's a part of it. It's 95% business. Like my man said. It's 95. If you don't learn, that's why it's so important to know it. That's why I go so hard. Now, if you don't give a fuck, you don't care about owning your masters, you don't care about anything. And then literally all you got to do, this is this is the best piece of advice I can give. This, this is going to be the best piece of advice 
that I give this whole live. I've, I've never said this before. So the 111 of y'all that are in here are lucky as fuck. This is the best piece of advice I'm ever going to give. If you don't care about owning your masters, you don't care about royalties, you don't care about publishing, you don't care about any of that music business shit, you just want to leave your job you're at, get paid more than what you're making at your, at your job you're at, and do your music full time, you need to sign to a record label. And the way you get signed to a record label is you get really, really good at making music. You learn how to mix, master, be a producer, sing, right? You know how to, everything with your vocals. Lock in. Become a maddening student about how to make music. If you need a partner, then you grab them. And then y'all just make a shit ton of music. And you release it every single day. Every single day for three years. Because y'all are masters in making music, y'all can come up with a thousand songs. And you release music every single day for three years on your Instagram and on your YouTube and have the general conversation with people. You will get signed within those three years. Guaranteed. If the, mu if the music has any potential of fucking with people because you have mastered it, you will get signed to record label within three years. Brayden, $5. I recently tried a single release with SoundCloud's distribution system. Let us know on a video you switched up to TuneCore. Keep working, man. No doubt. No doubt. Do you have a person or vendors you recommend to get merch created if having a hard time finding a vendor to buy bulk merch from at a good price? So we use Printful. Printful is a drop shipper, you know, and the merch is cool. It's solid. It's not, like, amazing, but it's, but it's cool. You know, so if you just want to have merch for people to buy, I would really, I would go with Printful because that way it's a drop shipper. You don't have to buy in bulk. You know, they charge you like per item is, is factored into the sale. So until you sell, right, you don't owe anything. It's it's legit. Appreciate you, man. Keep the dope advice. No doubt. Yeah, that's who we, that's who we fuck with, Printful. But that's another, that's another game. That's another lane that's, you know, completely sloppy as shit. Uh, merch lane. Oh my god! If oh shit, man, if you can figure that shit out, like if you're into fashion and you're trying to be a fashion entrepreneur, if you can figure out the merch shit, man, please, man, shit. You know what I mean? Shit, crazy. It's checked out. Don't sleep. How much do the streams pay you? Just the streams? That should have probably made me, man. Probably like seven thousand, six, seven thousand, maybe. I don't know. Gemini Cole, appreciate the two dollars, man. Should you upload every single song to every streaming platform, or just SoundCloud? What do you think? You should you upload your song to all the streaming platforms that pay. Or just have your song on the one platform that doesn't. What do you think, man? Which one do you think is going to be better for your life? I believe the Tupac dream. Everything happens for a reason. Swear to God, nigga, that shit was. Man, that that shit. The whole situation was crazy. But that's, and I I had that, and that kept me going. I, I'm going back to that. That that kept me going because even when people was talking shit about me and. This sucks, or the music, or you're not good, and just going hard for no reason. Just hating for no reason. You know, when people was doing that, man, it was like, y'all don't know Tupac came to me in a dream. So I'm not, I know I'm supposed to be doing this. I know I am. Like, it's not like I'm trying to do some shit. I know I'm supposed to. That's such a way. It's supposed for three years to get signed, get no money, and you don't care about independence. But you know what, Fritz? Some people they want to do that. They don't. They don't care. You know, they just want to make enough money to be able to do their music full time. They don't want to be rich neither. There's some a lot of people who make music don't want to be rich. You know, you recommend out sources someone to mix and master your beat before putting it out so you learn how to really do it yourself. Nah, as a as a beat maker, you need you not knowing how to mix your beats is a travesty. Because it ain't that hard. Mixing beats is not that hard. That is really not that difficult. 
once again, some something I didn't really dive into. But once I start diving into it, I'm like, this is not that hard at all. So if you don't know how to mix your beats, man, you're you're not a producer. So what's the correct digital marketing way? It matters what you're trying to accomplish. There's no one size fits all. Platform catch every eye. What do you do for your intros and endings and endings for YouTube? What software do you use? I got video editors and they use uh, you know, Final Cut, they use Adobe Premiere, they use DaVinci, they use all types of shit. So I don't know. Dorian, I'm in the fashion shit. I just don't want hoodies and shit. I want to make cardigan sweaters, pants, button ups. Then you in the then you in the fashion business. You better learn how to fucking sew. Apollo interface. I don't know. I don't have one. What kind of mic, audio camera to use to record your videos? This is a uh so what was it? Slate Slate M7, sure M7. I just got this motherfucker. I like it though. I like it a lot. Um got my focus right interface. Right now for this, on this is my iPhone, this video. But I have a Canon SL2. Um, like all the equipment that I have, shit, all the equipment that I have, if you click the description box, I got links to all that shit in there. All of it. So when you when you click them links, I get paid. When you well, when you buy from them links, I get paid. So whatever you're looking to use, like all my shit's in there. It's all in there. I'm trying to create a dark R and B sound. They can pass a pop someone to the weekend. Do it. Too many people out here just making music for clout. They don't know what's that's actually a spiritual experience. Yeah. You know, people poison and shit. If you don't mind them on your lightning, it's better signs to the record label. Yeah, I mean for real. So some people don't care. Some people don't, you know. I received my first royalty stamp. Congrats on that, bro. Can you be with Toon Corn and Disho Kid at the same time? Yeah, you can. But you're only going to get paid where your music is. You don't want to double release your stuff. So it just doesn't really make any sense. You know? Like, just doesn't make any any sense. Thank you. My bad on that. Nah, I, I forgot the links was in the description box. So I can't see it on here. Which interface and preamp do you use? The link's in the description box. All that's in there. Go down there, click it. See which ones I use. So, but yeah, man, y'all just got to post. Like, a lot of y'all scared to post. Like, I've been on this live for an hour and 47 minutes. It's on Facebook. It's on YouTube. It's on Periscope. You know, I'm up here just making content, talking shit, you know, watching basketball in the background. You know, and then I'm going to turn the ads on on this so it's going to make money. You know, and then if something in here gets said and it goes and it blows up, it might get shared. Who knows? You know, and then we got the super chat money that was made inside of here too. You know, so that's the stuff that like y'all really, really need to consider. Y'all really, really need to think about. Like y'all need to start thinking about like how am I gonna consistently make money when things slow down? Cause you know, no matter how good you get at making music, eventually it's gonna get to the point where you're not gonna have the time to make as much music as you want. But you can't be relying on the fact that if I don't make music, I don't get paid. If you have other stuff that's making you money residually, you don't have to be concerned with that. So, you know, y'all really need to understand that. Like all this stuff I'm doing is is strategic. Like I'm not on social media for for shits and giggles. I'm not a social media dude like that. I don't really care about other people's business. I'm on social media to make money. So I'm on there. And if the shit stops making me money, I'm off. I don't care. I don't care about it. So like, if you're going to be in this music business, any sort of business, you know, you have to understand this. And you have to put yourself in a position where, you know, you're really, really locked into getting paid. Now, I don't use the eyeball no more. I'm going to use that to record my vocals for my songs. But, like, it's it, it was just too much. It was too much right here. It's way too much. Sassy nine years because you only list your video equipment. Well, I'm about 90% positive if you go to the Amazon store, link in bio, that it has the interface in there because I added it. So um I think it's focus right or some shit. Or is it true that your that parents support your dreams when you're making money in your pocket? I don't know why parents 
support or don't support. I don't know. What age you get your first job? Like job, job, not no hustle. Sixteen. How much is marketing on average for one of your songs or albums? Imagine what I'm trying to do. You know, if I want to get a whole bunch of Spotify streams, I'm gonna market to a whole bunch of playlists. And you know, I know my playlist rates and stuff, but I don't know what like the going rates are to get on a playlist that's extremely popular and active right now. You know, might be five dollars, might be ten, might be five thousand. You say I don't know anymore. So, if you're trying to stay indie, your music retains more value if you release once a month, though, right? No, you need to put out as much music as you can. Rihanna, appreciate the twenty dollars super sticker. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. What type of data do you collect to find your target audience? That's really good. That's really, really good. I know Brianna had a YouTube channel. Y'all go subscribe to her YouTube channel. If she posts anything, you probably don't. But y'all go subscribe to the YouTube channel. What type of data do you collect to find your target audience? Um, you know, your target audience is going to find you. You know, because they show up. They're in your lives. They come to your comments and your other pages. They're on your email list. You know, like they're going to show up. They're going to find you. And when they find you, you know, you ain't got to worry about much, especially if you got Facebook pixel on your website. Now, all the people that found you, they're going to go to your website and Facebook pixel lets you know this is who it is, you know, and you can find more people just like them. It's, it's, the technology we have is insane. It's insane. That's why I keep telling y'all, like, it's never been better or whatever you want to do. You know, like, Ryan Brissett, have you tried Super Phone yet? I haven't. You know, like, any journalist out there that's looking to, like, do sports media, you know, it's, it's never been easier to put yourself, to make yourself a sports media personality. It's never been easier, ever. Like, you literally can... Can no matter where you live, where you exist, like wherever, you can literally finesse your way onto ESPN. And it's never been like that. You can start a podcast tonight, a sports podcast tonight. And if the, in the next 12 months, if you get like 100 athletes on there, pro athletes, and you get information out of them that other people can't, ESPN is going to call you within 12 months. You'll be able to name your salary and you'll be able to own your likeness and your royalties because you already have an audience. It's never been easier. It's never been been easier. You know, um, like earn your leisure. For those of y'all, like I've heard me shout them out a lot. Rashad's came on the podcast. Troy's came on the podcast. They've been on fire the past. They've been on fire. They started two years ago, the past month. I mean, they've had Joe Budden on. They've had Master P on. They had Mark Cuban on twice. They had, um, uh, um, DJ Envy on. They were on The Breakfast Club. They had Gary V on. I mean, just like in the past month. You know, and two years ago, they just started this podcast just on some, we just going to have people come up and talk about the things that they do. They've had Shaq. I mean, they are turning into a for real media company. You know, and they, and they started two months ago. Two years ago, I'm sorry. Anybody can do it now. Anybody can do it. You know, it's, it, you, you just got to do it. You want to be on ESPN, you need to put yourself in a position where you're going to be on ESPN. Or you're going to get more people watching you than they watch ESPN. It's, it's not hard anymore. Like, I used to always say this. Like, an uncensored sports channel would blow the fuck up. Like, the games where the mics are on and we can hear everything would blow up. Athletes ain't, ain't going that far. But they, with these podcasts, we're, we're learning more about our athletes than we ever have. And we, lo- we probably love them more than we ever have. You know, especially if you're a basketball fan. After Kobe died, I love LeBron more. You know what I'm saying? So it's the f- fanaticism for legit real sports media is at an all it's at an all time high. If I was still in coaching, that is what I would do to get myself an NBA job. I would do all of this stuff that I'm doing right now, but I would do it all basketball, all of it. And I would be in the NBA front office. If I literally shifted gears in the next 24 months, I take, I have group A2 music 
and I have group A2 hoops, and I just turn back into that basketball nerd, I would be an assistant GM somewhere, probably in like two to three seasons. That's how crazy this shit is now. Fucking Donald Trump became, went from real estate developer to a hairpiece to you're fired to the fucking president. Paul Clayton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is still really. Too much sauce getting slain tonight. Bro, I look at stream payout rates. So you stay independent, you become major, you bring home $34 million from streaming alone. Now, you ain't bringing home shit. They are. Bullseye. Them brothers kill them. That's crazy. They have. They've been on fire. That's why the NBA bubble ratings got what they did. Yeah, it's true. Yep. How do you increase your music production when you're trying to balance it off with the business side? Ever lost the art magic because nah, hell nah. I, I ain't experienced that. I'm a, like a weird creative motherfucker. You know, the type of art I want to make type of shit I want to do. And I, I got some, I got some weird shit, you know, that I ain't even went down that rabbit hole with me. Cause I'm gonna need to have the resources to make that shit a reality. Nigga, so I don't run out of ideas ever. It's just about do we, do we have the resources to execute? Bro, don't spend five minutes on one question. Why are you coming in here telling me how I need to talk to my audience? You're in the audience. I'm on stage. Why would I listen to you? My top people I watch on YouTube, Dorian number one, EYL number two. Appreciate that. Shit, go let them know that. Can you explain why you think Gary Vee is a culture vulture? Bro, I did like three videos on that shit. Fuck him. <laughs> like, I, I, did, I did three videos. on it. It's to the point now where like, you know, just I listen to him to just take the information. That's the only reason. He gives away information for free. All right, I'm taking it. Like, that's it. That's the only reason I listen to that motherfucker. And I don't even listen to him that much no more. All right, he got free information. Because when he started getting into that sports card shit, I said, okay, here we go. Like, you, he, he was a vulture, man. <laughs> if you can visit what decision you made, what would it be? Uh, to not play football all four years in high school. Thanks for your content. No doubt. That's the that's the one decision in my life I wish I would have. But I probably wouldn't be here. Maybe I would, but it would just probably be a, that would be a different version of me. I mean, if Russ averaged 100 million streams, he's easily bring on 30 million. Yeah, he gets on. He he does, man. You know, and, and I, don't like, I don't like people that be trying real hard to, like, know more about black shit than we do. Like, he be trying to act like he's this, like, underground drill trap rapper A&R. You know, I don't like that shit. I don't like that. Because it's not your lane. It's not your culture. You don't know nothing about that. You know, you bring these dudes on your podcast just in case one of them pops off. You know, that like you, you're using us for attention. And then when you go talk to these other people who, like, are starting companies and shit, like you talk to them, giving them real information, not just trying to have them on just to show off. You know, he uses black people for attention. He calls it hacking culture. Like, this motherfucker is literally telling us that shit. Like it, it wouldn't shock me if he's like a full blown white supremacist, and I'm not exaggerating. Like it, it would not shock me because he tries so hard to act like you know I'm this broke ass kid that couldn't read, immigrant parents. You know I'm about empathy and shit. And but it's like you say that all the fucking time, all the time. I was born with so much empathy. Like what are you talking about, man? It's like, yo, you're masking something crazy. You're masking something. I said, it wouldn't shock me if he's like a full blown white supremacist who's using all of this to get espionage on the black community, right? And it's just slowly just picking us off. And in, and in the process, he's helping others. And it's just a theory, conspiracy, no basis whatsoever. I could be completely fucking wrong. He might be the dopest white boy of all time. I don't know. All I know is this. I don't like that culture vulture hacking culture shit. 
I don't like that. What's up, Dorian? I have 11 million views on SoundClick. Congrats, man. Congrats, bro. You shit not even pop like that. You're telling somebody to stop. Okay. Then why are you here? Right. I mean, Gary V is still a white man in the day. For real. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, man, you know, rich white dudes can't be trusted. And I don't give a fuck rich white dudes get mad about that. It's the truth. You know, like, if you line up a bunch of chickens that are cooked, but they still can tell you their emotion, and they say, which room would do you think you'll be safer to come out of? the room with all the white people or the room with all the black people, the chickens are going to say, I think we're going to be safer in the room with all the white people because niggas eat chicken. You know what I mean? So it's like rich white dudes are greedy as fuck. You can't get mad at us because historically speaking, y'all eat the chicken. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's fucked up. It's fucked up. <laughs> so, guy. Okay. I can't I can't trust like I can't trust these people. I can't trust them. And so for me it becomes like very difficult when I see her, see something like EYL had him on. I'm just like, okay. Their platform, they with it. You do what you want to do. I'm not about to be like, I'm just, I'm just not. I just, I just can't do it. You know, I just can't do it. Yo, this is actually triggering me. What the fuck? Not spitting any facts at all right now. Then take your pussy ass on. No one's forcing you to be here. Do this. It's 11.40 p.m. on a Wednesday. You complain about what you see on YouTube. Y'all spend a lot of energy on shit y'all don't like while you sitting there broke on some real shit. How do you not let people get in your head? Were you born with that? Did that take time? Was there a point in your life where you said F it? Yeah, that's these are all actually really, really good questions. It's like a little bit of all of them. Like, you know, I am born with a certain level of I don't give a fuck. I was fortunate I had both my parents, still do, you know. And so, like, every day I had my mom, every day I had my dad, and they were kind of like, um, some conservative renegades and by conservative i don't mean politically i just mean like you know they both grew up in dysfunctional homes so they got married early to make it work you know they uh wanted their kids to love each other and have a good conversation they grew up in homes where people were arguing so they're going to try not to argue you know so and they did that at a very early age so it wasn't like they were renegades where they were like running naked in woodstock even though my parents ain't that old but they were conservative with the risk taking that they were doing. And so they put that in me a little bit, the risk taking, but I could take more risk than they could because I had them, you know, so I could do certain things. So, and when you start taking risk, you stop giving a fuck what other people think you have to, I'm doing what I want to do. And we moved around a lot. We moved around a whole lot. So I had to keep restarting all the time. And when you have to keep making friends over and over, or you don't like somebody or somebody that like you. And in your mind, you know, shit, I probably ain't going to be here in three years anyway. You start not, you kind of don't give a fuck about what other people think. Um, so it did take time. And was there a point in your life where you just said, fuck it? Yeah, high school. Um, you know, when I was 16, like I was trying to like fit in and all this shit. And it just got to where I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. You know, like I'm 5'8 at the time. I'm like, you know what? If, I, if I'm 5'9", fuck it. I'm 5'9". I'm just going to be a 5'9", nigga. You know, if if I don't ever play varsity sports, fuck it. I'm going to be varsity sports. If I don't ever become some big time whatever, fuck it. You know, I'm going to be me. I'm going to be happy. And the moment I say that, nigga, I go from 5'9", to 6'1". I go from 187 to 218, nigga. And I go from, you know, all over play varsity sports to, nigga, I'm about to start starting varsity football. You know, it, it just... And then girls went from, oh, Dorian's cute. You know, he's cute to shit, Dorian. You know what I mean? Like the energy shifted. <laughs> you know, my butt started getting grabbed more. You know, so it was just like I there was so much positive around me not giving a fuck no more 
Like I never had any reason to give a fuck really after that. And so I would get irritated by like why people um like want to insist on telling somebody, hey, I don't like your music. I don't like this, whatever. Like that was really weird to me because I didn't think social media was that serious, you know, but besides that, like I got over that because most people that hate on you and your music and shit, they work, they hate their life and they act like they don't, but they do. Like they hate their job. They hate their apartment. They hate their car. <laughs> they hate their clothes. They hate their bank account. They hate their debt. Like, you know, they hate, they can only get their hair cut once every two weeks, two and a half. They hate that they can't take the vacation to Tulum. They hate that they can't make more, like they hate shit, but they deal with it. They're not negative. They just hate so much shit. So when they see you doing something you actually can do, all that shit, it burns their soul. It burns a motherfucking soul. It's just like battery acid, nigga. Crazy. Just lost my home due to winter storm that hit. Put on my YouTube channel. Straightforward. It's not coming here for the info. I'm not giving up on nothing. That will put me to work for myself. Hashtag goals. Shout out to you, man. Shout out to you. That's why this is a decision you should revisit. I don't know what you're talking about. The time where I didn't give a fuck that in the middle school, bro, everybody sounds ugly as shit. Motherfucker just say shit, you know? Let them, man. You know what I mean? Life's short, short as fuck when you focus. Yeah, man, because you pushing your dream. For real. Motherfuckers be haters, man. It it, it burns their soul, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This shit be burning their fucking soul. Like, you can't let them fuck with you. Because, nigga, Mount. Like, people be talking shit like, man, this song fucking blows. So what do you think I should think I should take it down? Yeah. Yeah, let me go to Distro Kid and take it down for you. Like, what do you think I'm going to do, man? I, I'm not taking it down. You want to just let the world know that you don't like something. Why are you putting energy into shit you don't like? Go spend time with the shit you do like. That's Liking shit is much more pleasant than not liking shit. Liking how your girlfriend looks is a lot more pleasant than not liking how she looks. So why do you put energy towards shit you don't like? Makes no sense. Like, it's dumb. I'm not taking the song down. I'm going to keep getting paid off of it. I like it. You're not going to go listen to it no more. You can act like it doesn't exist. You don't like it. You're going to go listen to something that you do. Why write the negative comment? God, when I had locked in, subscribed to you, but the reason was because you'd be talking to understanding levels on how to get where you are, but on your own way as the watcher. Absolutely, man. Appreciate that. And the music is monetized in VR. That's coming. If it's not already happening. Dwayne, what's one business advice you wish you knew at the beginning of your of your journey? Um, shit, all the business advice I wanted to know, I looked up. There wasn't nothing that I didn't hear. I read a lot, man. I mean, shit about books, about, you know, the richest man in Babylon. That was something somebody was like, I, I kept seeing that book. Richest man in Babylon, richest man in Babylon. I was like, shit, let me go read it. You know, that motherfucker hit. Uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Kept seeing that. I saw it earlier. I read that. That motherfucker hit. You know, learning about um, Benjamin Graham and shit. Or like, like, I bought a very simple stock book. It was a very, very simple stock book out of Borders. I can't remember what it was called. On my old Periscope videos, I hold it up. You know, it was almost like how I make my videos, but it was about stocks. Started from the beginning, nigga, and read that. I literally sat down in Barnes. It was Barnes and Nobles, not Borders. I literally sat down in there and read the book while I was in there. And I was like, damn, I read the shit. I might as well buy it. Come and read it again, you know, like. And then I just kept reading online. Business Insider, CNBC, you know, kept checking for shit, trying to understand what stuff meant. P.E. ratio and earnings per share and the high, the low and dividend, dividend yield and, you know, 52 week 
how, like, you know, trying to understand this shit. And when you keep reading it and looking at it every single day, you eventually going to start learning. And then you start listening to people that have been there who are the richest people in the world. I started watching interviews of hedge funds managers. I started watching a bunch of Warren Buffett interviews. I started like looking at all these people who were even DECA millionaires, like people who had like, you know, a hundred million and shit. Like, listen to them. What what are they saying? There's so much information out there. Everybody was saying the same shit. So once I figured out that everybody's saying the same shit, I'm like, well, I'm gonna just do that shit. So I ain't had no shocks with business. None. Because everybody talked about it. They all they give you the keys. Thank you for breaking bed with cats like Gary, other rich white people to build back your open red agenda. Man, I, listen, we've been doing that for how long? We don't have to sit down with them. They they giving it away for free. The internet has opened it up. Like there's no white internet, black internet. It's everybody's internet. We don't, I don't have to be in the same room with these vultures anymore. They they talk online all day. They make more content than us. What the fuck we need to be in the same room with them for? Get all their information and use it the same way they do. And then we bring our money together, our resources to, together. And now the next time they do some shit, it's like, mm, nah, y'all used to us having ant heels, ant heels. No, now we got a motherfucking mountain. Boom. And we got 78,000 other mountains popping up every minute. Y'all gonna listen to what the fuck we got to say now. You know, like, so there's no reason to be in these rooms with them. None. Like the superior complex. Or how do you think they're gonna set up distribution with kind of some monetized in the future? I don't know, man. I think the government probably gonna get involved or something. Because the shit's fucked. We're just men in Babylon. The book I keep seeing is Rich Dad Poor Dad. Is that book good? It is good. Robert Kiyosaki, a racist motherfucker, but it's good. You know, literally read that book and get that information. You can get it for free, steal it, because he's a bitch. I stole Richest Man in Babylon. I ain't gonna lie. I would have bought that. I don't know who wrote it, but you know. Random, would you ever give relationship advice or do a segment on love? Nah. <laughs> you know, like people, you know, <laughs> man, I'll, you know, first of all, I don't like open up too much on, on my stuff like that because I give y'all so much other stuff. But also, and people take that stuff just way too, like, you know, serious and they get so mad. It's just like, man, it's completely unnecessary because you just need to do what makes you happy and find a person that makes you happy. It's like everybody's looking for an answer instead of looking for love. You know, they're looking for the answer to the question as opposed to looking for the person. And it's it's just very like my delivery based on how I feel that day is going to hurt a lot of people's feelings, you know, because a lot of everybody who's single, especially past a certain age, you're choosing to be. Especially if you're a man, you are choosing to be, you know, and it's just like a lot of y'all don't know about relationships because y'all was raised wrong, you know, and I'm going to say shit like that and people are going to get mad. I'm like, man, it, at the end of the day, it don't matter. You ain't coming home to me. So like, do what you want to do. Shit. Who am I? People get what they have. If all you have is hate for self, then that's all you're going to get. Absolutely. Absolutely. Y'all should read Black Peers by Charlamagne and God. I ain't read it. I like Charlamagne. Good dude, though. Hood talk don't work in business. I don't know what the fuck you talking about. What are you talking about? Child Hermetica is spiritual but teaches universal laws. Basically where they got ideas of the secret, but for all the universal laws. Yeah, I'm not reading that. That shit ain't making me no money right now. How are you going live? You on a schedule? When I feel like it. Whenever I feel like it. Talk street or broken English to board meeting and get investors. Fuck you need investors for. You get sales. You get sales, you finance yourself. If you want to go in there and tap dance like a little pussy ass bitch and begging for their money, yeah, you got to follow their rules. You beg for somebody's money, you got to follow their rules. And their rules, and their rules are going to be when you walk in this room, make sure your dick's smaller than mine and your balls are tucked up to your stomach because it makes me uncomfortable. Make sure your hair is in a certain way. Make sure you shave your beard down. You're clean shaven. 
Make sure you got the right color power suit and power tie because you're begging and tap dancing for their money. Please, sir, save me. I suck your dick. It's not a meme. That was me mocking someone. Please don't steal that <laughs> and make it ridiculous. But, you know, that's all it is. So you're right. When you want to go and be someone's bitch, you got to do what the fuck they tell you to do. But when you're doing shit on your own, you talk how the fuck you want. Y'all niggas thirsty. Did you get a web designer to make Group A2 website for you? Yeah, we got in-house. I was fortunate with that. We had in-house, in-house web design, you know, but you know, like a lot of y'all just be too, y'all be too caught up in this dumb shit. Like, you know, nigga, you need to follow the rules that these white people put out in front of you if you're asking them for their money. I ain't never deny that. It's just like anything. If a motherfucker want to come ask you for my money, they got to follow my rules. Like, that's, when I spend my money, they got to follow my rules. It's my money. So, you're right. For those of y'all that want to continue to tap dance, you better follow some rules. But don't come to niggas that ain't tap dancing no more, as we all do, and tell us what we should be doing. Nigga, you the tap dancing monkey. I'm not. I wake up when I want. Go to sleep when I want. Work out when I want. Spend time with my family when I want. Like, fuck out of here. You know, shit. This time last week, I flew my family to Vegas because wasn't no lights, wasn't no power, wasn't no water. This time last week. Other people couldn't because I do what I want. If I was working for somebody, I would have to ask for permission and worry about that and save money. I don't have to do that no more. So you niggas that keep tap dancing, like, shut the fuck up trying to bring your tap dancing ass rules over here. Wrote my song for someone special. She had my weed, but we tango. It's great, bro. If you spend a thousand on the video, how would you flip to make it back? You know, the video needs to be selling something. I mean, what are you selling? If you're selling music, that ain't going to be enough. Because you're going to have to run $1,000. I mean, part of the $1,000 budget is going to have to be running ads. And we run ads for snippets for the music video. It needs to encourage people to buy something. They don't encourage people to buy something. You don't, you're not going to have shit. Nigga, I fucking blocked you. Like, why is this nigga back home? I fucking blocked you, bro. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. How much more features. I ain't, I ain't doing no features. And I ain't doing no features, man. It ain't, you know. I hate working with other people. You know, I like the honesty. You tell people we have all been in those positions. You just don't have to stay in that position. That shows you how I care. There's so much respect. Appreciate that, Schwan Holmes, man. That is what it is, you know. That's exactly what it is. Bro, you drop so much knowledge and even thought I am not into making music. I like listening before you give out. Now, y'all, y'all be the ones that really keep me going, too, you know, because, like, like, especially for about a year there, all my content was music business heavy. But, you know, a lot of y'all weren't in the music business, but y'all will come watch the videos and you tell it would apply to your industry. You know, and that stuff meant a lot. But that meant a lot, man. If I spend $1,000 on ad selling merch, what should I do? I don't know, man. You better make a commercial that people want to see within fucking four seconds. What if your audience wants you to tap dance for them? Audience only going to want you to do something that you already vol voluntarily did for free. Audiences don't ask you to do random shit. None of y'all walked up to me randomly on the street and said, you should do music, music, music business videos on Instagram and YouTube to sell your music. None of y'all ever told me that. I did this. And y'all saw that I did it and you started responding to the stuff that you liked. That's what your audience does for you. They never make you do nothing. You got to introduce it to them. So if you come into it as a tap dancing puppet coon and they respond to that, guess what? Now you're the tap dancing puppet coon. If I'm not mistaken, you don't advertise your own shit. It would be safe to assume that you're not tap dancing for these cats. 
you don't advertise us as your own shit. What are you what are you talking about? I don't even understand what the fucking question was. Yeah, we gonna work. No doubt. Love your music, Dorian. Thank you, Catherine. It means a lot. Channel goes hard. Appreciate that, Dark Alpha. Good big bro. Be easy, dude. You do work harder than a lot on here. You make connections to music in real life. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate y'all to be coming through. It's a recording studio to turn into media companies 2021. Hell yeah. I'm, you know, I'm going back to that. Rome, the producer. You know, that's hell yeah, man. You know, let me uh, take a sip of this good hydrogen, is it hydrogen dioxide. You know, if you are recording studio, the only way you going to really, really become some big time major engineer is if uh, somebody who you work with locally blows the fuck up. <laughs> like, it is beyond tough for y'all to be big time engineers beyond tough you know so you're only going to be as big as you know what's around you and what you can handle online and a good engineer is a good engineer but to the common artists who you're dealing with they don't know the difference so you'll only be able to charge so much like even though your skills might be 400 dollars an hour your markets you might only be able to charge 100 an hour you know, cause that's just how it is. Cause they'll find somebody else who's just as comparable at 65 an hour. You know, so as a recording studio, you need to offer other services that artists need. Every service I offer at group 82 recording services should offer too. I mean, recording studio should offer too. every service, graphic design, fucking music videos, like crazy. That should definitely be a service. Y'all offer micro content, social media, marketing, playlist placements. I mean, all that shit. Like y'all should, the recording studio should offer everything. And because y'all will have so much music getting made all the time, you'll have people that will buy your package where, hey, you give us $1,000 for your song. We're going to get your song done in this amount of time. Your song's going to get a cover art. Your song's going to get social media clips of five. Your song's going to get a, a 60 second music video. Your song's going to be on Spotify playlists. How many people will come to your studio over to local studios? You will fucking kick ass. Because people know my song is going to get manufactured and it's going to get marketed. And if you really learn social media ads, that can be part of your pro cam campaign, sorry, or, or part of your program. Because you can run a Facebook ads campaign for views, video views, and it'll be real views. And if you can say, listen, we're going to spend... X amount of dollars until your video gets 100,000 views on Facebook, 100,000 real views on Facebook. And if you start really playing with it, you know that that only takes probably $600, $700, $800 to get that based on the demographic and the music. Man, you could charge $2,000 for that. If someone knows that you're going to get them guaranteed real views on Facebook and you're going to spend the budget until it happens, you give us $2,000 and we're going to make that happen. Man, they're going to pay for that. It's recording studios, that's all y'all need to be. Podcasts. Y'all need to be helping motherfuckers with podcasts like crazy. Podcast collabs, interviews. I mean, the whole media shebang. Y'all have the infrastructure to create the audio content. It, it makes no sense. Did you ever want to quit? If so, else you persevere for better. Hell yeah, you want to quit. Like I said, Tupac came to me in a dream, man. Like, and it was all kind of fucked up shit that got me to that point. And I, listen, I knew I'm supposed to be doing this. I couldn't speak for nobody else. Do you keep an email laws of blogs? Do you keep an email list of blogs or playlists to support your releases? Do you use the EPK? I don't use the EPK. We offer that, but I don't use it because, you know, I don't really be shopping myself for press like that. Um, Damn, the Warriors, Steph hit 1-3, and the Warriors beat the Pacers by four. That is embarrassing. 19% from three to go and say Warriors were. 
and beat us. Wow. Um, do you keep an email list of blogs? No one reads blogs. And the players says, yeah, I have a whole, like, yeah. And, but, you know, I haven't reached out to them. <laughs> Who <Ooh>, shit. <laughs> Man. It's been a minute. So, you know, ain't no telling what that shit's worth now. You know, we have, we asked, like, the list that we use for Group 82 when we ship your stuff out is way more active and way more up to date than my personal list. I'm talking about my personal list that I use to get my first one, one million streams. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's, I, I don't talk to them that much no more, to be honest. Because the side recording series there's so much content that happens, includes sessions. I break away from recording the whole podcast or artists, live streaming my session. I'm telling you, y'all need to have everything. Yeah, you need to have everything. It's it's crazy. I was just thinking about this, bro. You're very right. You never have to worry about blowing up an artist to win. It's a new world for real. If if your studio becomes just a hub to make content, like we were trying to find like a a, a legit podcast studio to record our podcast, you know. And when I was in LA, that's somewhere I could take my camera to, and we set all that up, and it had the board, and you know, and it was a decent price, and we just couldn't find anything that was good, you know, and and I needed that. So, like, that's why everybody's setting all this shit up at home. You know, if you can really set up a legit studio where people can just come in and make content, you can have memberships. I mean, the shit would be banging, man. It would be fucking banging, you know, and because people are constantly making content. And when they need help to market it, it's crazy. Shit, you know what the really missing is the engineering market. Man, I'm telling y'all this right now. I'm learning that shit. And I have a gift for this. I got a gift for music. My engineering skills are going to get good. And when they get good, good, all you engineers that's been waiting, it's going to be bad news. I'm telling you. I'm going to change the whole game. It's going to be bad news. I'm telling you, man, y'all motherfuckers better, better establish your brand now. It's going to be bad news. You know, like how it was for these music business niggas. I, I couldn't warn them. I couldn't warn them, you know. But they saw. It was bad news. It was bad news for them. They had chances trying to, you know, combine with people and collab with people. And niggas wasn't trying to do it. Okay, all right. It's a matter of time. Now. I done wiped most of them out. Most of them gone. Gone. Couldn't keep up. Marketing began before creation. The first thing a songwriter may ask, who is this for? Yeah, absolutely. Unless you're trying to just get out of specific emotion. But, you know, there's so many gaps, man, in this music shit. There's so many gaps in social media shit. There's there's so many gaps. I, it's a lot of gaps, you know, and y'all need to pay attention to these gaps. And y'all need to put yourself in a position where you're feeling them. You know, because once you fill the gap, it's money. You know, like my gap was the Spotify playlisting music business, black man rapper who's intelligent. The gap was there. It was wide open. It was wide the fuck open. Nobody wanted to fill it. Everybody else trying to fill it didn't have the credibility. You know, I'll even say someone's name. They're going to start a beef, whatever. And they didn't even like that, but I'll just say a thing like, how to rap Drew. You know, he had really good content. His videos were good. His Kendrick Lamar video, uh, Money Trees Breakdown. His J. Cole, Get Off My Dick Breakdown. I mean, that, bro, that shit changed how I wrote songs. But he broke that shit down. He was spending a lot of money on YouTube ads. You know, and he was building up. I'm like, damn, he's gonna be in a good spot. He was he lived in LA the same time I did. And I reached out to him. I was like, man, I really want to sit down and talk to you. And they would sit down and talk about what? I said, man, sit down and talk about what's going on here in LA, like how to do the shows, all this shit, whoopty whoop. He was like, oh, that's gonna cost, you know, what you want to meet up. It was like two hundred dollars. It wasn't that much. I was like, nah, you know, I don't know. Nah, I get it. I don't wanna waste your time. I'm I'm not I'm not gonna pay that. Um, and I just started making my own content, you know, to start really doing stuff. And he um he shifted into talking about like forex and crypto, and then he started like um talking about 
uh, Instagram growth and some other shit. I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? You know, and <laughs> like it was weird because he has some, like, I'm telling you, his song breakdown videos were good. This shit's really fucking good. You know, I was like, man, he should do more of those. Like, that shit was crazy. And it had like hundreds of thousands of views. And it just came out. I'm like, man, what, whatever. So, you know, and then he just started getting a little weirded with it. Then my stuff started popping, you know. We were both in LA and he had DM me and we was just talking. I was like, man, yeah, shit, we should link. We should do a podcast together. And I told him because I was already having a podcast team. I had a producer. I had a co-host. I had me. We had people that was going to handle the audio. I said, but what we're going to do, we do the podcast with you. There's a time I think he had like a hundred something thousand YouTube subscribers. If we do the podcast with you and we put it on both our channels, when we register at YouTube, we get access to a whole YouTube studio. And in that studio, we can do so much cool shit. And like our shit can grow, you know? So if it was like, oh man, I just want to interview you for my podcast. I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? It's not what we discussed. We were talking about doing a podcast together. Now you just want to interview me? I'm like, I'm like, you don't get it. You know, and then shit, that was at least two years ago. Way past him now. You know, and it's just like, and I go check to see if he's still doing shit, whatever. Selling this ebook for $9.99 is got the funnel and you know went away from the personal one-on-one rap coaching. And you know, it's niggas just out here just trying to grab whatever. Trying to grab whatever. You know, and it's just like that ain't why I do this shit. So many other people. Like I see them. It's like. You know, the only other people that I see that's still killing is Curtis King and Kato Producer. That's it. Everybody else is like, fell off. Views right now in what three markets? I mean, there's no specific three markets. You don't know? It doesn't even make any sense. Music's played everywhere. But do you best to organically grow your fan base through the internet or use money on ads and target a niche to grow a fan base? Using ads is organic growth. Anything that's not fake is organic. Like, if you think you about to build an audience with no money, good fucking luck. It's so hard to do that. It's so fucking hard to do that. Like, it's, it, there's so many things that got to go right for you to do that. Not only is it hard to get it, it's hard to sustain. Super hard to sustain that, you know, so yeah, I wouldn't do that. That wouldn't be something that I would really consider doing. You need to just make sure you have an audience that really fucks with you and rocks with you and you find them. But, you know, spend all that money on ads and shit, you're going to drive yourself crazy, man. Or trying to do it free, like. You know, if if you try to do it free, it's it's nearly impossible. But you try to spend all this money on ads, you're gonna be like, yo, how do I get this done? You know, so Dorian, I'm gonna give it to you next month, homie. No doubt. So many people want to pop off, expect it to take a few years before you make money off the music, if at all. Sorry. Most of my money isn't made doing a live shows regionally, you know. Um, like I don't even do shows like that, like you know, I will eventually, but you know, I don't even do shows like that. I'm not a if it's not putting money in my pocket at a really high return and I mean like return for my time, if it's not putting money in my pocket for that, I don't I don't want nothing to do with it. Honestly. I don't want nothing to do with that shit. <laughs> like I need to make sure that my time is is appreciated. I need to make sure my time made me some money. I need to make sure my time put me in a really good position. I'm not about to be wasting my time. You know, so doing them shows, man, making two hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. You know, you do a show, make two thousand dollars. It's not even worth that, to be honest. 
you know, the the more money that I make on um the more money that I make on uh on the internet, like the more my show rate goes up. It's like you asked me to leave my family. That's worth more than five thousand dollars, man. Seriously. It's not it's not enough money for me to do that. Jesus Christ, nigga, Ryan dunking on everybody, nigga. He about to dunk again. Boom. Jesus, this nigga crazy. You know, so it's like I I'm not I don't know how much it's ever gonna be worth me. Like just not doing shows, but I don't know how it's ever going to be worth me being like, you know what? I'm going to just tour. You know, it's like the the tour money would have to be crazy. So, But I don't know. We'll see. I forget Brand Man Network. I don't really watch his stuff. You know, he had a few videos early on, but, you know, when um when I see somebody that's like talking about the music business and they're not a producer or an engineer, or an artist, I don't, I don't really want to listen to what they got to say, you know. And he would talk about marketing and branding. It was cool, but then I would go look at stuff like that he had. It wasn't didn't have the Facebook pixel on there. I know it sounds like I'm hating, but I'm not. I'm just being honest about this shit because there's a lot of people that are out here giving advice, you know. And some of them know what they're talking about, but a lot of people don't. And it's it makes motherfuckers look bad to try to help. And so, and I'm not saying that he's one of them. Like I said, some of his stuff's good. But just the way he was positioning himself as some sort of music business expert, it's like, man, but you don't really do nothing in the music business, though. You know, it's, it's, come on. Have you ever had an artist where you think you got into his music because of how much you liked him and her as a person? No. No. <laughs> like, I, I got to like the music. There's a lot of people in the music business who I like their public persona, but I don't. I don't listen to their art, you know, like, you know, I like Russ's public persona. I like the shit he gives. I watch all his interviews. I don't listen to his music like that. I don't listen to Chance's music like that. Like I ain't listening to Nipsey's music. I still don't listen to Nipsey's music like that. Um, you know, I'm trying to think somebody else who, it's a lot of people, you know, I, I I don't, I don't really do that. Want to be smart for artists to create their own label as an LLC and find a way to build capital in order to get a loan to fund the label and career? No. Loan is not smart. You don't need no loan, man. Why are you always trying to tap dance with somebody money? Like, we live in America, man. And in America, you literally can have a product and sell it to someone else for whatever you want and you keep majority of it and you just pay taxes and it can come from something that doesn't exist physically. It can be something in your head. You can say words all day and just keep saying words over and over and over again. And if your words, which are free for you, sorry, which are free for you to say, if your words convince people and make them feel something at a certain point you can tell them with your words to give you money and they'll do it it costs nothing to speak words nothing and you can get paid from that why the hell do y'all keep wanting to go get a loan you can make your own money and finance your own shit i don't understand You know, it's, it doesn't, I don't get it. You want to start your career off in debt and having a boss. That, you need to just get a job. You know, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough for a lot of people. Because y'all overthink this shit. You know, if you know how to make money, this is the perfect business for you. You ain't got to worry about, like, how am I going to get paid? You know how to make money. Y'all so busy, so ready to go get a white dude's pocketbook. 
wallet. And then mad when the white dude tells you what to do. You took his fucking money. This motherfucker gave you $2 million. Like, yeah, he's going to tell you what to do. Give his fucking money back. Like, I mean, same with athletes. Like, like, I get it. I get it. Same time, motherfucker pay you $30 million. He going to feel like he can talk to you any type of way. I ain't saying it's right. Speak back. Always keep your respect. But people be acting all shocked and shit. This motherfucker pays you $30 million a year. He going to say outrageous shit. You don't like it, let him know. But don't be surprised when they do it. Come on, man. You use email list? Hell yeah. Own that. I'm on fire fighting internship and we'll be hired within a year. I'll be using my side to fully fund myself independently. Fuck a label. Build your leverage. That's a plan. This is this is a plan. Victor, are, are you in Oxnard, California, by any chance? This is a plan. He's on a firefighter internship. He's going to get done. He's going to become a firefighter. That salary thing starting off is like 40, right? I think by year three, it's like 65, 70. He's, he's young, probably, I'm assuming. I don't think he has a family the way that he's talking. And he's going to take that money. He's going to set up shop. He's going to get him a crib. He's going to finance his own fucking career. That's how you do it. This is a plan. You know, he was able to summarize that and put all that in there and let me know his emotions in, in one sentence. This is what I'd be talking about. This is this is someone who's who's prepared. This is someone who has a mentality who's going to make it. He said he's in Chicago. This is someone who's going to make it. He's he's going to make money from his music. I haven't heard his music. I don't know what he rap about. I don't know what he do. But I already know he's going to make money from his music. He won't this time next year, this time two years from now, we won't be talking to Victor and he hasn't made a dollar from his music like some of y'all who've been making music for 15 years. It's, shit's not that hard, man. The plan is not that hard. And when you put together these little plans, it makes it a lot easier to do a big plan, which can lead to you charting number one on iTunes. Y'all hit like on this video. Hit like. Like, hit share. It's free. Costs you no money. Do that. Hit like right now. Platform, you on Facebook, Instagram. I mean, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. Don't have any trust in themselves to do it, which is why I got the class coming. The class is going to give you trust in yourself to do it. And at least if, and if you can't execute it, the class is going to give information to somebody who can't execute it. Let's find a person in your life that's real tech savvy. Or find a real person in your life that's intelligent, right? And that has the patience and that loves you. And you have them take the class. I'm telling you, man. Or you do it yourself. You know, it's going to give you everything you need to make money from your music. I wish a lot of y'all, you know, when that class drops, man, y'all need to sign up for that shit. It's going to be $2,000. From the best $2,000 that, that you spend. I, I, now, shit. Shit crazy. You know, like, I don't know why, man. Every time I start talking about the class, like, and this is going to be the best $2,000 you ever spent. I started thinking about the six years it took me to make this shit. And I don't get emotional, but I get like, like my, like, I guess my tear ducts open up a little bit more. It's like, could I be thinking about that shit, man? Like, nigga, six years. And I'm able to put all that shit together in a fucking package. It's going to save y'all so much fucking time, man. So much time. So much time, you know, and and a, and a lot of people like they they just don't want to share info. I got a video coming about that, but like they just don't want to share info. Just I don't, I don't understand that shit, you know. So I hope that y'all sign up for it. We gonna film it, man. I hope that y'all take advantage of that shit, you know, because. Some of y'all, a lot of y'all need it. A lot of y'all really, really need it. You know, and I think the best thing about the class is what it's really going to do is that, like, you're going to get in that motherfucker and you're going to be like, oh, this is real. And you're really going to be able to gauge and see, like, if you truly, truly want this. Because if you do everything that's in that class, like I tell you to do it, like, it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of effort. 
but you're gonna get done and you're gonna you'll you'll have the calluses built up to go through this shit. Like when I was talking earlier about me being a fucking lion, when you get done with this class, you'll 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 be a lion. <laughs> you will you have no choice. Come on, your inspiration. Thank you. No doubt. Thank you for your endurance, D. No doubt. Appreciate y'all. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, what? Y'all hit like, hit share. Appreciate all y'all that came through. I'm about to chill out. Love y'all. Not the pond. That's ain't true.